Welcome to Dwarven Jeez. Forge Live. How's my level? <laughs> this is a lot higher than what the um, than what the pre-roll what you was were probably. Expecting. This yeah. is the show with no tech issues. And this is a show where we That's take not you... a tech issue. That's human error. <laughs> take right. two. Welcome to Dwarven Forge Live. This is on the anvil, episode one hundred and twenty-four. This is the show where we take you behind the scenes here at Dwarven Forge. We show you some of the things we're working on, we discuss some of the challenges we're facing, and we might just give you a glimpse of the future, and we never have any human error or technical issues on this show whatsoever. The end. Welcome. Mm -hmm. Woo! There we go. We're here. I need to we're live. Uh, it's been, I feel like I haven't done this in forever. Uh, yeah. It's been a while. Yeah. Uh, this is only the second stream of the month. Uh, no. You had, yeah. And there's like a lot of weeks in this month, too. It's a... Well, because we had the one post Gen Con, and then you, then you got sick, and then you were gone. Uh, whoa, did that just die? Whoa, it's back. Also, the show where there's no supernatural presences that we beloved. Hello, I know that was, friendly ghost. Please. I know that was off. That's off camera, so you guys ah. couldn't see it. Yeah, one of the lights just straight up turned off. And then after yeah. three seconds, slowly turned back on. It was sending us a message from beyond. That's a little so alarming. It was trapped in the upside down. That's a little alarming. So what uh, what are we doing tonight, Chris? Uh, tonight we're mostly so since Nate's been here. Um, the, the only other stream we really did outside of some hobby hangs was me and Tyler did that uh, game found launch stream for Wildlands Reforged. Yeah. Uh, that whole thing happened since Nate was last year, so this is mostly going to be kind of a retrospective. Uh, on that, a post-mortem. Uh, kind of also seeing how you guys felt about it and letting you know how we felt about it. Um, yeah. Diving into Reforged. Yeah. We're, uh, are we going to give anybody anything? Um, there's going to be... Besides entertainment, two hours of our delightful presence. Well, hasn't. we've got a, we've got a, we've got a, uh, secret giveaway. Uh, you want to show it now? Okay, we'll show be? it now. I don't know. All right, well, we'll, we'll, we'll Very mention it secret. in a little bit. Are we doing no. that in addition to or instead of? Yeah, let's, do, let's, let's in celebrate to? because okay. you know, we missed so many giveaways all month. That's fair. That, uh, yeah. yeah, we're going to be giving away a $50 Dwarven Forge gift card, a uh, digital one, so everybody's eligible. That'll be about an hour in. Uh, and then we'll also do a How Secret Is It if it's on Instagram? Oh, did we say that, did we say that we're giving it away <laughs> oh, on Instagram? I might have said it on this post. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, never mind. Right. Yeah, we're also going to be giving away Nobody a copy of Instagram, a... Instagram, right? <laughs> hmm? Does anybody go to Instagram? A good amount. Oh, okay. I'm not a big Instagram person because I... Uh, don't like my body, but um, a lot of people use it. It's a very popular platform. I, I, I know. I so are all of them, I guess. But yeah, well, yeah, debatably. Yeah. Um, it was Facebook. It's, it's on, on all of them. It's Here's on the thing. Space. It's it's on yeah. all of them. He like he put it on Twitter or well, X, I... and then Mace grabs that. This and is puts well it everywhere else. well planned. Very yeah, ex like every Dwarven <laughs> Forge plan executed yeah. flawlessly. Um, so two giveaways. Yeah, two giveaways. The middle of the day. The two giveaways uh, in the, the about an hour into the stream. One woo. is a fifty dollars Dwarven Forge gift card, and one is a, a book what that just came be? out. Right, mysterious. Um, yeah, uh, we've actually got a good amount of news uh, today because there's just a lot of stuff to catch up on. Uh, we have any uh, anybody weeks. new here? Um, new I've seen a viewers? couple fairly new names. Yeah, only I don't want to call Forge. anybody out. Yes. Well, if you're uh, if you're oh, new, yeah, the book will be U.S. only because of the yeah. We have to yeah, ship yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Book will be U.S. only, but the gift card. This card for everybody. Not. Yeah, the gift cards for everybody. Everybody here gets a gift. Uh, if you're new, welcome. Please uh, feel free to interact with us. We love, that's why we're here. We love uh, We love the chit chat. We love the feedback. Yeah. We love the jokes. We you love can send a little ice cream emoji camera. and then Nate will pretend to uh, yeah. eat the ice cream. Oh no, the NPC. Oh. It was we put great. that on, on mm -hmm. uh, did we put, did we do an NPC one on the social? No, we've talked about okay. doing one. We yeah. talked about doing one, yeah, but, we, but we haven't. I, yeah. Um, man, to be at don't that, go to, on the internet. To, to be to be at that table where <laughs> uh, Annika from Dwarven Forge was explaining the NPC TikTok trend uh, to Nate nope. was something else. Nope. That was one of the highlights of Gen Con. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, welcome. Join us. Be nice and uh, feel free to hop in or lurk or whatever works. Anything else we need to uh, do before we uh, we get lively? Er, est. <laughs> I'm feeling spicy uh, tonight. This is probably good. I'm tired. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, we got some news to cover. That's basically it. There's a lot of news. I wonder what that means. 
It's the news. Whoa, it's the news. I've got your slider like the news. I have your slider down at like negative 30 decibels and you're still blowing it out every time. What's in the news, Chris? Stop. All right. Um, well, all right. So let me bring up the list here. Uh, let's do... All right. Let's start with uh, general site updates. Uh, starting with uh, restock updates. Um, we had some shipping delays hit our restock containers. So both the September and October restocks got pushed back a couple weeks. Uh, so those have been... The September became October and the October became November. Uh, but then also, we've added uh, a new restock in January. We just mm. put through another order. Uh, and that's got some stuff on there, like uh, the, the, those crystal walls and corners that sold out immediately. More um, crystal caverns. Regular regular paint only, right? Standard, yeah. Because uh, the Underdoom looks like it'll hold on enough for us to be able to put that in another order, basically. Yes. Uh, so, uh, stuff like that. We've also got other things uh, coming in. It's a lot of dungeon stuff. Mostly, it's mostly dungeon stuff in that restock. Um, yeah. So and those how's are all the best the way to, uh, have the, what's the best way to know what's going on with restocks? If you go to our website, dwarvenforge.com, uh, there's a restock, uh, there's a, there's, you know, there's a top menu, like all modern websites have, uh, <laughs> and there's a restock tab there that'll give you a drop down that will show you, uh, all of the restocks that are coming up. So you can sort them by, by month and all that. Also, you can sign up for the mailing list if you're not already in the mailing list, and then we'll send you an email when the restock goes live. You know yeah, what's coming. That is also that. that, um, that. Yeah, so uh, that's that's happening. You might notice when you go there that uh, uh, the website looks a bit different. What? Uh, we've actually we, we brought on a web developer who is uh, working with Letitia to... Uh, drag our website kicking and screaming into the 21st century. Um, so uh, throughout the rest of the year, probably we'll be updating it and kind of modernizing it, uh, trying to make it easier to navigate, easier to find information. There's a lot of like resources and guides and stuff like that, uh, that we've added over the years for various Kickstarters that have kind of gotten buried and it's hard to find. Um, as well as adding informational information. Yes. Uh, so Education. just, yes, yeah, so just in general, just actually the issue was, you know, the website was always a thing that we had to do when we weren't doing everything else. And now we have somebody whose job is explicitly to do the website. So, uh, that should be moving a lot faster and we're very excited to see that some of the stuff has rolled out, uh, and there's going to be a lot more coming. Uh, let us know what you yeah. think. Yes. We want to hear news on the limited pillar. Uh, the runic yeah. columns will be in the November restock. Uh, they don't have the listing yet because it is a new set. And so we need to make a new, it's a reconfigured set. So we need to make a new listing for it and everything. And we haven't, we haven't done that yet. So, um, it's coming. yeah, so we'll, we'll have that ready well in time for the restock. Hey, uh, nice. so yeah, once we, once we've actually got, there's a, there's a couple of reconfigured sets actually. Cause along with that, we've also got, uh, Underdoom banks and Underdoom large banks coming Those in. Those are that new. One. This is exciting. This is yeah. like. And then uh, the it's a it's a Thanksgiving is what you're saying. It's a Thanksgiving. Oh, because it got pushed back to yeah. November. See, it was all part of the match. Oh, we plan. have to do that. We have to yeah. do it. I need to tell I need to tell Mace. Mace, are you watching? Let me know if you're not watching, and then I'll message you instead. Flicker the light three times if you're watching. Yeah. Uh, turn off. Uh, what paint scheme are the runic columns? Uh, they should be ice, because the the standard paint was ice, I believe. I'll 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 double check on that. Um. Are the diagonals in the new restock the new version of the old ones with the gap? They should be the they're the vaulted. So the vaulted we never had a the vaulted ones are fine. It's the old original OG dungeons that are. I'm gonna check real quick gap. and make sure they should be the vaulted. I'm gonna check real quick and make sure you didn't put the <laughs> the classic diagonals in the new restock. Turns out we reordered the classics. Did he, did he did he reorder the classic diagonals again? Should we take bets? Who wants to bet? Valorian coins. I'm not on... seeing the classic diagonals. Okay. I don't think we did. I think when he did it last time, we were like, hey. Those are retired till we fix it. Okay, yeah, the vaulteds are fine. It's the classic. It's the classic diagonal that we had to resculpt. It's been resculpted. It just hasn't been tooled and uh, and cast. Which hey, uh, later later today we might wind up talking about um, doing that. Yeah, later today we might talk about how we get those new dungeon Woo! diagonals. Um, yeah, I'm gonna double check. I'm pretty sure that the default 
for the runic column pack is going to be ice. We might have put it through an ice and standard. I'll have to check. Uh, Hopefully standard, because it's super useful. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll double check. Worst case scenario, we can if not, do... There's always next year. Yeah. It, sh it should be a pretty easy thing to yeah. follow up either way. Mace, hey! hey. Look at the timing. Uh, we were Mace, talking about you. Hey. Uh, uh, <laughs> we gotta do a cool... We gotta do a fun thing here. Um, so the, the, uh, the those new bank sets that were coming in in October, the shipment got delayed until November. So we can Let's literally... See if you can fill in the... Yeah, we fill can in literally the, fill yeah, in the uh, yeah. you, guess what that you, means. Are you able to, yeah, you What's going to gonna happen this November, Mace? Yeah, yeah, you able to fill that use in? Use your comedic timing. Bring the hammer down. <laughs> really what do you have? You can do this. It's hard to use comedic timing when we're on like, when you're like a five an eight second, second delay. delay. <laughs> yeah. Come on, we believe in you. Uh, uh We're going to celebrate we a happy... We have banks. A happy what? In the coming in November. New banks. It's going to be a big celebration new, around the banks. A commercial was going. New Under Doom and Ice Banks are coming <laughs> in November. <laughs> Thanksgiving. She got she it without any help. Seem, Amazing. She does not seem happy about this. I'm sorry. Uh, there, was, there was an implied frowny emoji on that. I think. Yeah. There, there, there was an implied. Uh, uh, there's an implied HR email. Uh, in, the, in that response. Woo! Um, Super bowel. All yeah. right. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> let's see a base. All right. So we got that's three stocks. Yes. Woo! What else is in the news? Um, we see we hit the restocks, we hit the website. Uh, I think we covered everything to do with both of those things that matters. If I forgot anything, let me know. Um, we're gonna we're gonna cover conventions real quick. We have like a number of convention news things. Woo! Uh, first is uh, surprise, uh, uh, surprise. <laughs> He's surprised. Look how surprised he is. Surprise! Uh, me and Tyler are going to be at uh, Pax West. Woo! Um. Wait, we're Tyler's not gonna have a booth or anything. Oh, is he's at? He's because he was there for a wedding, there. anyways. So yeah, he's yeah, like, yeah, you know yeah. what? I can do. Makes so sense. we're both gonna, yeah. Um, we're not having a booth or anything. However, there is some fun stuff happening at Pax West. If you're if you are going, uh, you should check out both of the Acquisitions Incorporated events that are going on during the convention for some reason or other. Um, some random reason. Yeah, for, I bet you can't guess why we would want you to check out the Acquisitions Incorporated events. At, at Not related to modular terrain, right? No. Yeah. They don't make terrain. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so uh, Tyler and I will be there. Um, and uh, if you're, you know, if you're not going to PAX West, the one of the Acquisitions Incorporated events the game uh, will be streamed, so you should check in and watch Live. that stream. And we'll remind people when they get there. That's Saturday night. Uh, the game's happening. So yeah. Um, also, hi, hey Matt. Oh yeah, Matt's going too. Hell yeah. Yeah. We're Are you gonna, guys gonna, gonna play gonna Lancer? Paint, while you're yeah, out there? I'm gonna show. Yeah. We could play. The, we're gonna have half of the Lancer crew. We'll have half of just, the Lancer crew in, in Seattle. Challenge some Seattleites to a, a steel cage Lancer match. The guy, the dude, the. The guy that is like the the showrunner for the Acquisitions Incorporated Life games. You told me three times on air. Yeah. So. Okay. yeah. All right. Never mind. Okay. It's the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah so that, that that's happening. Um. Also, uh, another convention coming up. Uh, Essen Spiel. Um. Yay. Some people have noticed. Some people who are going to Essen uh, have noticed that there is a Dwarven Forge booth there. Just gonna let you know what that is. Uh, similar thing happened last year as well. Uh. Uh, we're not running it. We have a friend in Germany, uh, Rick Wagner, who is uh, who is going to be uh, running like a short Dwarven Forge booth. He's done it for a while. He's been trying to help us uh, over there. For years. God, God bless his soul. Um, he's been he's been trying to help us for a long time. Um, and so yeah, so if you do want to, you know, if you are going to Spiel, uh, you can stop by that Dwarven Forge booth and meet Rick. Uh, very very nice dude. Um, should be a fun time. Have some DF stuff to show. We'll see. Yeah. Fresh flyers or something. I don't know. What are we? What are we giving him, Mace? What I don't entirely really know. Ma yeah, Mace is the one I think that coordinates that with him. I I know very little. Mace, um, Mace is the brains of. Well, Mace is the brains of the whole operation, but mm -hmm. specifically conventions. Um, in the, the last convention we really wanted to talk about, uh, is uh we are going to be at Unplugged. So yes. if anybody was on the fence about going to PAX Unplugged, we were giving you a couple months heads up that we are planning to be there. Uh, so, yeah, with like an actual like booth and stuff, like actual genuine Dwarven Forge presence. Can't we confirm uh, that we're going to be at Adepticon 
Also, I don't know if it's confirmed confirmed. I know that we want to. I mean, if we've got sci-fi launching, then we've got to. So, like, I'm totally down. Yeah, May, May says not yet for sure. I guess oh, we can okay. say that that's our intention. We're, we have intentions. We have schemes to be at Adepticon. Um, not yet, but 95%. Yeah. yeah. Should be fun. That means it'll be easier to track Ooh, down Chris and deliver him a cheeseburger. I keep miss. I I completely missed him at Unplugged last year. Um, well, no booth. Yeah. But yeah. this year, we'll this, have a, this we're year, have an empty platter year. awaiting cheeseburgers. We just so have a, you'll know what to do. We just we just, we just have a silver platter just yeah, sitting on one of the tables. <laughs> so just, people leave cheeseburgers for not you. sharing a booth at Unplugged. No, baby, it's our own booth. Yeah, no sharing. We're gonna do our own thing. No takes back. Dude. No sharing. Uh, looking forward to seeing all unplugged. Right, MC Charles is gonna have a table there. He's gonna set up a big old, uh, Hell big old yeah. build to advertise yeah. his photography and stuff. It's really good. Yeah, he's gonna have a huge DF build what? there. How big? How big is your build gonna be? I think he's not in the expo hall, but he's in a different area. I think he's in. Yeah. I think he picked a different area. I can't remember if he's doing the expo hall or not. But That's yeah, it's gonna be awesome. It's super cool. Uh, ninety-five percent means just not really one. Yeah, like Adepticon in general. I think uh, our plan is to be doing more conventions than we have been in the future. Jesus. And so it's Ooh. been a lot of Mace has been working really hard on getting all that together. Um, so yeah, if you, you know, she propelled us to great success at uh, Gen Con. Very very smooth. Yes, well done, Mace. It was good times. And Eight? we've been talking a lot too about like wanting to actively. Eight. By 36. 36 eight inches, feet? not feet. 8 feet by... 8 feet by 3, three feet. feet. Unless it's 8 inches by 36 inches. An 8 inch wide build oh, wait, seems... Eight, yeah, eight, 8 foot. Feet? 8 foot by 36 inch. Okay, wow. so eight, 8 by 3. That's that's big. Yeah. It's How big is our booth? Um, so are you a, I'm, I'm hearing we have to do a 10 foot by 36 inch build. What, what do we have? Like a, do, we probably got... Yeah, we got a 10 by 10 again. <laughs> I'm hearing. Oh, we have to do a ten by ten build. Is what I'm hearing. The whole thing is a build. There's one nothing the, in it. We're just gonna have a giant diorama. One of the big things we're trying to. Uh, one of the big things we're trying to do too is get like sponsoring tables and stuff. A hundred Especially square feet of build, Mace says. We're. we're, we're <laughs> it's just gonna be one. Yes. <laughs> that would be interesting, actually. We don't really have to man the. There's dude. nobody there. It's just postcards and a big build, and like to build just... it, we would have to literally be like on the table. Yeah, working backwards. It, it would just not even. Be, we, or you build the tables and slide them together or something, and like build them separately and then yeah, slide it on one thing. You could do that. It'd be so stupid. Just a one hundred square yeah. foot table. <laughs> yeah, perfect. We're so all over it. That would be a really good use of our time and space. Mace is just shouting surfaces now. <laughs> Go the ceiling! <laughs> Woo! Make the whole convention hall out of Dwarven Forge. You could. Um, yeah. No, yeah. So we're. Yeah. It's gonna be um, awesome. Yeah. So we're going to try to do a lot more conventions. So if you've been wanting to see uh, Dwarven Forge, but we haven't been hitting conventions by you, the odds of that are increasing Yes. Uh, over the next year. Yes. We're trying to hit a lot of, including we're, we're uh, trying to see if we can get overseas. So yep. we'll be exciting. see how that goes. I there really there are intentions to do so. Yes. Um, PAX East, uh, again, maybe? Probably. I I suggested we do two conventions at the exact same time and split the team, and Mace thinks it's a poor idea, and she's probably right. It's, it's literally the exact same it, weekend. It's Yeah, it's, it's, it's the same weekend again, which is why we didn't do it at Epicon this yeah. year. It's it's tough because, well, I guess it comes down to, like, if it is, it's a lot of discussions to have. Because like, yeah. if it is just our team, that's a lot. Um, yep. but we, uh, yeah. Yeah. Ah. Well, let's see what, we will see what transpires. Yes. Okay. Ooh. Um. What's up? I thought of it. Do you have any more official news? I had one more thing. Go after hit. conventions. Um. Hey, you might remember hey. sometime last year. Uh, we uh talked about this uh coffee table build book. There's a better way to phrase that. Called the tremendous tome of. Dunge epic dungeon tremendous tome of epic dungeons <laughs> nailed it first try uh, i couldn't remember what the back back half was um well you know we keep getting asked to uh okay, to right. to make a coffee table book of dwarven forge builds uh these guys basically did that it's not all dwarven forge stuff a lot of it's dwarven forge stuff 
Um, there's yeah, also some stuff variety. from tabletop scenery. Tabletop is in scenery there. is in there. Like, like there's a number of things, uh, uh, including uh, NPC Charles homemade stuff. NPC Charles has has some stuff in there. Uh, Todd Michael Putnam has some stuff in there. Uh, there's a good variety of people, and you know the people who put the book together, uh, Jeff Hall and Dave Taylor. Uh, they also use their stuff. Jeff Hall has all the Underdoom. Yes. This is an entire so Underdoom. Uh, yeah. But I did, if you remember that so, war game build uh, from from Lowtown, the one with like the big Aaron Thor castle NPC keep. Charles. We did a photo shoot on that for this. Yeah. He makes his, he, he knows how to photograph the stuff better than we do. <laughs> he shoots that stuff his better job. than we do. Yeah. Um, is it all blank? Make your own dungeon. It's just like yeah, it's yeah. just like a really fancy notebook. It's a giant invisible dungeon. You can just like <laughs> it's all invisible ink. It's all yeah. it's all dungeon layouts and invisible ink. <laughs> He's got to like hold a, hold a light. It's a UV. It. Uh, yeah. Um. Oh, you've got Ryan Devoto's giant. Yes. Megopolis it's literally like here. a thirty foot like, long table yeah. or something. Oh. Uh. Yeah, it's awesome. Fun thing is like that Chris book. Built thing in here. The book actually is. I've got two builds in there. And then I think we also give them a Lowtown preview. Yeah, that's one of the ones yep. I put together. Um, yeah, if you search Tremendous Tome of Epic Dungeons, it's being sold in a couple places, actually, it looks like. Uh, that stuff is on sale if you would like a, a nice little coffee table book of really pretty builds. Gooey Cube. Yeah, Gooey Cube's in there. Games. Um, yeah. A lot of our friends, honestly. It's awesome. It it's, really, out... it's really fun to look through and see how people use different bits and... Um... It's think who Steve Jackson's team is in here, and where's the, where's it turns the out when you uh, put together a book full of people who love terrain, we end up knowing most of them. Yeah, no, it's awful. Awesome. <laughs> like, it's, it's just delightful. Todd Michael Putnam is in here with some big, uh, big awesomeness. This guy is awesome. We don't know this guy, Matt from RP Archive. That's cool. You'll be selling them at your booth. Oh, you'll be selling the tremendous tomes at Woo! MC Charles. Will be selling the tremendous tome books at his at his booth, I guess. So we do need to promote unplug. his thing. Yes. We need to we need to reach out to everybody that we know who's going to unplug yeah. and get some synergy going. We got a couple months to do it. So this we're gonna give away the, a copy of this at the halfway point. Yes, uh, we'll do that along with, and as well as the gift card. There'll be separate things. The book will have to be U.S. only. We can only ship. Inside the United States. You know what also was neat about this is it was a failed Kickstarter. They mm -hmm. like they launched it, didn't work out. They pulled the plug. They re like reconfigured it. They're like figured out what was you know how should we approach this differently? What should we do? And relaunched to success and made the thing and it's awesome. But it was like it's a great example of something you know if it's not working, stop it. Figure out what you know. Go back, change it. And you can still make it pull it off. And it was uh, it was awesome. Yeah. Very happy pulled together this weekend i realized warm forge really needs a flesh city after high town campaign two was so long ago flesh so long city. ago though yeah wow. flesh city is just a repaint of the burrows what i've seen gross <laughs> yeah um so the two pieces of news i just updates on the other projects that we have going on uh one is sci-fi set so back in wildlands we promised we'd do a sci-fi set we have been continuing to do so. Uh, we are making good progress, and I believe our current plan right now is uh, September 13th, we'll do an episode. We will uh, we'll show the first look at Sci-Fi Set on the 13th. So two weeks, <laughs> two more episodes from now. Yeah. Well, we have to do a team presentation that day, so it's so we'll have everything all rounded up. Is it the 13th so. or the 6th? I thought it was next week was the team the 13th. We moved okay. it. To, it it, six, back. it would officially be the sixth. Would be six weeks, but towards the Gen Con, we moved it to the the following week, the thirteenth. So anyway, so the plan is we'll do a first look on the thirteenth at uh, where we're at with sci-fi, um, and then once we unveil that, we can show you a little more. This, you know, one of the things I've been missing, we haven't done a lot of um, process episodes, right? We used to do a lot of like, hey, here's what we're working on, here's how we're together, here's what we're doing. We did when Michelle was here. We had sculpting one over. We haven't done a bunch of those in a while. Um, a lot of it because the sort of the projects we're working on aren't ready to be looked at like that. So, yeah. We also have so, been just juggling so much more. Yes. Um, we've also, I mean, just over the last couple of months, we've we've missed so many streams just because we've been we've been traveling a lot more because um, we, we're doing conventions again. And there's, we're, there's a lot a lot yeah. brewing, but yeah. 
once we show this, then we can we can show some more. Uh, we can show you a little more of the process and what's what's been going into sci-fi, what's cooking, whatever. The current plan is to launch that in March of 2024, right around when Adepticon is. Go figure. Oh, that's really convenient. Yeah, works out, right? Yeah. Um, and it's gonna be very exciting. I'm excited to to show you. We've been uh, we've been chipping away at that thing, and it's. Uh, it's shaping up, and it'll be fun to show the process too. Show it evolve. Like we'll have the core bits to show, and then as we get new stuff, you can see where it's going. Um, that yeah. is really, it's really neat. It's just getting like it's turning real. Um, and then we also, to that end, we will have conceptually uh, Michelle and Eli will be in studio middle of October, and should be on a Wednesday. So we'll try and do an episode with both of them on the air. Uh, middle of October, and we can show whatever the latest they've been working on. We can do another episode of just actually maybe sculpting on air. Yeah, be fun or something. I guess while we're mentioning that too, uh, somebody asked for like a, a brief low ten update. Um, it's moving. We're gonna have a Kickstarter update going out tomorrow. Tomorrow, yeah. And are we, we're including some pictures of stuff, right? Yeah, uh, Tyler's rounding up pictures. Basically, we're just we're we're chugging along on low town. Uh, Mostly, it's been all engineering, all of the biscuit holes and facade holes, and uh, squaring up all the angles. It's all—it's basically all been uh, just engineering that's been happening. The tooling started, but like, there's nothing, nothing to show yet, uh, really. I mean, there's a bunch of digital stuff to show of, like, mm -hmm. you know, stuff that's got holes in it. Yay! Um, with the yeah, with the nature of like something like low town compared to wildlands because so much of it is about needing to be like super precise about where all these pieces are going to connect so that it actually stays stable and all that it most of the prep has been like move this yep. thing over a couple millimeters <laughs> like, like do that it's a, a yeah. third of a millimeter <laughs> yeah so it's yeah. yeah most most of the process has been a lot of very minute lots of little stuff. cleanup all the it's yeah. not the not so exciting stuff but uh, it is cooking along um we are i can't remember what what uh, Tyler said, he thinks we're gonna ship two months late or something, roughly. I don't know. I'm making up the dates, but it's we're we're slightly behind where we want to be, but cooking ahead. Um, yeah. So. Well, it's you know, it's we're we're trying a lot of new stuff with this, and hey. so it started off with a little bit of like, how exactly do we do this? Then we found our we found a rhythm, and like now it's actually moving well. Well, we're on the hook yeah. for engineering. We've never been on the hook for engineering before. It was always yeah. uh, the factory doing it, so it's been a whole. Wait, there's been a lot of learning. Mm -hmm. In low town, they had to develop a new course. workflow, but yeah, it's, it's what he's saying. It's it's going really well now. So yeah, yeah. Oh, and to answer, Sutani. Oh, I, I wasn't Sutani. sure if you want to answer that now or later. Game founder Kickstarter. I, so don't I figured know. that would be. I figured that would be part of the conversation for today. Yeah. Basically, we we don't know yet. The like, I'm I'm lobbying Game Found. We'll see what makes sense. But we're, part of it is we want to hear what you guys think about the Game Found experience before we make any decisions. But it's a good question. So yeah, so we'll we'll more updates in sci-fi to come. Right now, pencil in September thirteenth. We'll have a first look uh, at the pieces and get a sense of what's going on. Now we have a good question about Wildlands. Dragos is writing a novel for us. So with Wildlands Reforged appearing to be a success, do you anticipate a pattern of chaos fulfillment, then a reforged style low town after leftover stock gone, or low town designed in such a way that simply restocking would be more feasible? Mm. <laughs> uh, it, the hope is that so it's the hope is that we won't need to do it with low town um we definitely have thought of like we've got like several other projects where we're like you know what like this is stuff that we've been kind of wanting to do the aforementioned dungeon reconfig thing with like we need to like recast like five pieces we're gonna work like, through the back catalog before we get to the brand new yeah thing. it's an excellent question yeah um also, yeah. anything that we say that pertains to like two years from now is like it's probably all going to change. Yeah. The, the the main the main thing is you know we we don't want to just do this for every restock, uh, and we don't want to just do this without a without a purpose. Um, but this is shown like a very this is shown like a very viable way for us to say like we need to do something that is a little bit bigger than what we're comfortable doing just straight to web store. But it's not quite big enough to make like a huge big fuss out of like a, a massive campaign uh, out of it, and this has shown us that there is a way forward to do stuff like that. It's really yeah. exciting. So there, there's a couple there's a couple things that we already know we want to do, um, and it's just mm -hmm. kind of figuring out 
when to do those, basically. So the last, uh, the last bit of news is Where Heroes Dare, the uh, dungeon crawler board game that we were working on with Stephen Baker, who designed Hero Quest. Uh, that is cooking along. We have a we have a big team summit on September nineteenth to look at the latest proof of concept all together, um, and then anticipate probably a first look at that in October, November. That's I... that's sooner than I was expecting. Yeah, I think we got because we got to start. We got to start doing some. We're going to start doing some play testing outside of here in November. So we're going to have to show it at that point anyway, or something. So I don't know, somewhere around there. Um, excited to uh, unveil that when we're getting closer and anticipate that launching about this time next year. We'll see what happens. All right, that was a that was a, that was a news segment with an exclamation point at the end of it. There's a lot of stuff to cover. It's been a couple of weeks. It's been a couple weeks and a lot of stuff happened over those weeks. Um, after a long time of not really much happening. Right. Uh, then a lot of stuff happened. Um, uh, Game Found. Mm. Wildlands Reforged. Yes. So we, uh, this was, first of all, this project was a wonderful success for us, right? We said mm -hmm. sort of going out, we, were, we, wanted to, we wanted to make 300K, 500 would be great success, and a million would be bonkers, and we landed right halfway between those two. Um, in solid, uh, solid territory. It was yeah. really, it was pretty amazing to see. I think one of the, I think one of the things uh, to keep in mind, like when I guess when looking at Game Found is we weren't looking at it from a campaign angle. We were looking at it from a restock angle, mm -hmm. um, and so we were like, if this pulls around like what a really good restock does, like then we're then we're good. And we kind of blew way that. past that. Yeah. So, um, so that was. Very nice. Yeah. yeah. So let's let's dig into it a little bit, right? So I, I have a list of things that I, of things that I noted in discussion points, and I'm sure you have a whole bunch more. Mm -hmm. Should we dive into the list? And mine is in absolutely random order. That's pretty much everything that comes out of my brain. Fair. Um, so one. Uh, so it's, we're going to be swerving all over the road. So buckle up. Um, uh, number one was. Uh, the automated stretch goals are awesome, right? Like one of the biggest stresses on graphics team is the actual maintaining and updating stretch goals and having to swap out the graphics and all the stuff up and locks and it unlocks in the middle of the night and you do this and it, you know it's a whole rigmarole. Having a, like having an automated system for that is pretty damn amazing, you know, on our end. Yeah. I don't know what it's like on the receiving end, but it's like it's at the top of the page baked in. You can see what all the things are like. I don't know. Did anybody did anybody not enjoy the automated? Let's not talk about the actual stretch goals themselves. We're just talking about the system, and then we can, then I'll segue into stretch goals. There were a couple things um, that I would do differently with with how we uh, with how we set them up. Mm -hmm. um, like looking back at it, I think I would have made it where it because uh, part of it was just like working with an entirely new system. There's some stuff that we just weren't gonna think about until we were in it we realized oh it would have been nice to do this yep um it would have been we should have gone in and changed the descriptions like looking back on it in hindsight to link to the sets uh that had that had then been unlocked so that people yes, could find the you could just buy it because for for customers of our for, for people that like we brought over to game found who didn't know how it worked they were expecting that the stretch goal listing itself would be the thing that they could add to their cart which makes a lot of sense sure i would expect um, the same thing and yeah so i i think yeah. i think realizing now like okay what we should have done was then use the, the the description of the stretch goal to like link to like you can find the set here here and it'll yep. just take them like straight to it um maybe that's something we can do by pledge manager to to, to clean it up yeah. um is a good one. Yeah. So I think that I think that would be I think that would be a solid thing to do. Uh, also, just with the amount of sets we had, it was sometimes I think difficult to figure out: Are we putting this in scatter? Or are we putting this in forest? Like for some of them. Yeah. Um, so yeah. But that's also a general challenge with all of our, you know, whatever platform we're on. Yeah. Uh, and the one thing, uh, two. It would be nice if we get in, this is something I'm going to, we're going to have a meeting with the GameFound team to just talk about like our experience and all that. One thing I'm going to ask is like, is there a way where we can set it up where it would actually, can we set conditions on listings so that it can the, the product would thing. automatically go live? Because yeah. we did still have to go in and then set the product Turn listing it live, live, which it, it took five seconds, so it wasn't a big deal. Yeah, but it defeats some of the automation. If it happens yep. overnight, like it's kind of, 
yeah. So that's one thing I'm going to uh, talk to them and see like if that is a thing we could do. But yeah. yeah. Um, I've, got, I've got a couple things I want to talk to them about. Uh, well, that's, I mean, that's that. one of the awesome things about the platform too, is they're listening, right? They yeah. say, hey, what, what else, what can make this better? What do we, like they, they were almost too communicative, right? Like it was a lot of like, they're really into it. I must have it. had at least 100 emails from them over the course of yeah. doing this project. Yeah. It's awesome. And they're not done, but yeah. Versus the one email a year we get from Kickstarter. <laughs> Uh, uh let's see so that was uh so then how about the stretch goals themselves so right obviously this was a this was not a and it's kind of a, a weird analysis right this is a restock right so we weren't gonna be throwing a bunch of free pieces at people and whatever um did it did it work was it i don't know how do people feel about having you know the more people that show up to get stuff the more sets we can unlock um as a restock thing, how did that how did that sit? How did that feel? That was the that was one of the tough things to figure out. Yeah, was how do you do incentives for something like this as opposed to the campaign? Yeah. And it's and that is the thing, right? It's not like I'm not trying to replicate a a big crowdfunding campaign for a new product line. Um, that doesn't mean it can't be exciting though. Like trying to find some because it felt like maybe there was it, it felt a little lackluster. They were saying, right, there wasn't the same, but it's also once again, it's, I don't know. It's supposed to be a low-key thing, and that, that yeah. was part of it, too, because there's been some some comments about, like, you know, is there not as, is there as much foot traffic as there is on Kickstarter? I think it's negligible, like, when you really kind of consider things, just because our... Well, I don't niche... think anybody was like, well, I was going to pledge, but then I didn't see any stretch goals, so I didn't. I mean, maybe... I, th I think in terms know. of, like, I, I think... I think the instance of somebody randomly wandering wandering across our product on either platform is minimal. Um, Cause I think in general, people don't really randomly browse sites as much anymore as they, as they used to. Um, it's about that being, you know, it's, it's marketing to drive them to the page, no matter which platform we're on. There are a couple people who discovered us because we were on GameFound, and there were a couple people who discovered us on Kickstarter during Lowtown. Yeah. Um, but it's a very small amount in both cases. Um, and I think the main thing with GameFound is at least the people who are there, we know are interested in tabletop games because that's all that that site does. Yeah. Um, cause we have a, we have a very, very small slice of the population that's actually like our demographic. Well, that's the, you know, that's sort of the, the, one of the devs had on the list is sort of visibility. So I think the, you know, the interesting thing is we don't, we don't get a ton of foot traffic on Kickstarter. Right there is, um, like you said, there's you know most of the people there are not looking for modular dungeon terrain, premium high end modular dungeon terrain. Mm -hmm. They're looking for a cooler or an album or a game or a whatever, but not this. Um, and we've never we've never been successful at j you know just randomly scooping up a bunch of people from Kickstarter, with the exception of the very first with KS One. When it was still a new, fresh thing or whatever, but it's never something that we've we've mostly sort of brought our own audience, and our marketing has had but even that with minimal that, impact. Even that with that first Kickstarter, though, the traffic didn't come from people randomly finding out on Kickstarter so much as it came from word of mouth, as people were like, "Hey, did you see this stuff?" It, it came, was it forums, came, it, yeah. the Reaper forums, and the whatever, and people were like posting it out and or putting on Facebook, and yeah. It's Social. definitely like there are absolutely more people that go to Kickstarter, yep. but there's also a lot more noise there. There's hundreds of projects at any yep. given time. There, there were 13 campaigns going while we were on GameFound. And we were the biggest. Of the... We were one of the biggest, yeah. yeah. Us and Vampire the Masquerade were, were didn't battling we be, didn't it Didn't we beat them at the end? We the, beat them by like yeah. a couple thousand dollars. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> and, and photo finish. Take that, Vampire. I love yeah. your product. Uh... Well, and we had, you know, what we did have on, yeah. what we did have on... You know, comparing um, low town visibility to, to Wild Entry Forge visibility, we were on the front page of GameFound every day. Mm -hmm. We were on the bottom of all their emails that they were sending out. They were like very actively promoting us. Like you couldn't be on GameFound and not know that we were there. Versus low town, like you know, there was no like you could be on yeah. Kickstarter and not know low town existed very very easily. I I, I think is, I, I think in either situation, which sucked. <laughs> it yeah. sucked. I, I, I think I, I think in either situation, the reality is there's no platform that we can rely on 
you know, on us just getting a, mass, a massive bunch of exposure yep. by by being there. I, I think the reality yep. is the way that the internet works today, we need to go out and bring people in, uh, whether yep. that's through our mailing list, whether that's through uh, marketing, which we tried. I need to talk about the marketing um, near the end of this uh, as well. Um, I'll put it on the list. Has any projects on GameFound reached the heights of the original Wildlands or Kickstarter projects such as Gloomhaven? Uh, they've had some pretty big stuff on there. They just closed something out at... What did Stalker close out at? Like 1.7 million? Something like that? Oh they closed God. out at over a million. Dungeons they, and they, Lasers did over a million. And yeah, they, they've had big stuff fine. on there. Yeah. Um, was marketing spending higher for Wildlands Reforged? Uh, no, it was lower. We didn't we didn't mark it as, as hard as we do for our normal campaigns. Because it's supposed to be like a lower key thing. But we tried some different things with that marketing spend. Which is the the main thing. Oh. Um, uh, Monster Hunter game was tempting. That would have been less well than Reforged. But they made, a, they made a ton of that. I mean, I'm not going to... I also went all in on it. Just for the minis. Which is a bad thing to do. Yeah, but, but there's some cool minis. They're very cool minis. They're very, very cool. And I'm they're not going to use them giant. for anything. They're, they're too big to actually use in a tabletop game, but... Yeah. Kings of Rune is 4.5 mil or more. Yeah. yeah. So there's definitely like, I, I don't think that there's like a, well, you're going to fail if you go on this platform. I, I think we could run this on backer kit. We could run it on Kickstarter. We could run it. Like, I, I think wherever we go, it's going to be up to us to do marketing, to do word of mouth. We have to um, bring our own audience. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to attribute organic discovery as a very big part of any crowdfunding campaign at this point maybe back in like the early days of kickstarter that was a thing but i don't Not think right people now. go i don't think people go to crowdfunding sites well it's, i mean just, our, just like, our analytics just like, are telling yeah. us that's not that they're not you know that's well, I'm, I'm just trying to think of like yeah. i don't think i know anybody who just goes to crowdfunding sites just looking for things to spend money on they go there with a purpose like they go there because they've heard of yeah. something or yeah. they heard, they saw the announcement that the thing was coming or they saw it on social or they yeah. Saw it on a forum or yeah, or I think a convention. The way, I think it's the way right? the they signed up at a convention for the thing because they thought it was cool. And, well, yeah. yeah, but I think I mean I think that you know to do as well as Reforge did uh, as a you know that was a it was a pre order no new pieces did really well. It feels like you know we did we the did much platform less. wasn't slowing us down. Yeah, we did much less to get the word out. We yep. um we it, it also like. What because it's like a, a a reconfigure thing. I think that also made it kind of a difficult thing for for newer people. It really did feel like a thing that would it, it, it hit us yep. like it hit us like two ways. It hit us in the way of like I think if you were coming in as somebody who didn't have any of this stuff, it made it a little harder to like. We understand. didn't have a great entry point for new people. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then also because we were mostly we were treating it once again like a restock, kind of like hey, you already yeah. have some stuff here, get some more. You know, you, and we didn't and we didn't yep. want to make new compositions. Uh, to appeal to new people Easier because starter. We, yep. this was about getting the store stocked. Yep, um, and, and that could have that also... could have hurt our new new backer conversion yeah. for sure. Like we did not we didn't make it super friendly to new folks. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and then also I think there were a lot of people who also are just going to wait for this to hit the store, which is entirely valid. Yeah. So. Well, and that's yeah. also there's no loss there for us. Like that's the whole point. Is like we could, if you want to pre-order it, you guarantee your stuff. If not, you take your chances when it gets to the store. But it was like. Either way, it was you know it's a win. Like we're gonna have a stuff for everybody. Do you have any idea how many people were original Wildlands backers versus mm. new backers? Uh, we can check the emails against like the emails of backers we had for specific campaigns. It's hard to tell. We'd have to get like really minute to like figure out. And uh, we do we know can. that we didn't yeah. get a ton of new people. I'm curious. The last couple of days we had a lot of backers come in, so I am curious if we did get a lot of new people in the last couple of days. But about a week into it, it was almost exclusively people who had bought from us before in one way or another. Um, but yeah. I'm going to um, keep on a bike as it's the, you know, a good point of the Wildlands and varied entry. Wildlands stuff is just more expensive to start than any of our other sets. So it's but really we're going to do it. we're going to do some surveys and polls and stuff to to gather info about a lot of this stuff uh, as well. Uh Beyond the make packs, it's tough to know what other compositions would be good to purchase without asking a lot of questions. Yeah, and that's and that you know a lot of that was we did not have the resources that we would have in a regular campaign to put into this. We didn't have like all the staff. We didn't have like Toby and Miles like on hand to like do sample builds. We didn't have uh, we weren't streaming all the time to be able to like cover things like this. This had to be like a very low key, low resource thing. Um, 
And yeah. Hey, Wicked Donuts. Uh, were you? Was this? A, was this your first? What? What? Uh, you're saying that it was difficult as a newer buyer, but the videos helped you um, figure out what to get. Um, was this your first DF buying experience? So I'm kind of curious. Having the list is like, what level of video support do we need? So we had a few getting started videos, um, and then whatever our existing stuff was. The question is, was that enough? Uh, you know, did we need more? Did we need more materials? Like we were trying to do this with this, the minimum amount of materials um, and focusing on evergreen content. Was it enough to work? This would be for okay. You had no no wildlands. They're a fairly new person. Yeah, they were in on on cult, but this was their. They were really active in the Discord and stuff too. Were the um, did you have enough video content to guide you on uh, on reforged? Because what was great on you know on our end, doing doing what we three getting started videos, say how to pledge video, uh, and an intro video. Mm -hmm. So pretty light, and three of those are evergreen, and the how to pledge becomes a template for kind of the other ones. Because, and it really needed a how to like. It, it, there's enough different stuff on the site that it needs a walkthrough. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, hmm. Finley, curious if GameFound can manage all the sites <laughs> you might have on a full project like Lowtown. Um, it, it has the space for it. Uh, the thing is like. GameFound set up, it takes a lot of time to like set up all those individual listings, but then, I mean, we don't need to, the upside, the upside to that is going into our pledge manager, we basically don't have to do anything. Well, we don't have to build like, a site to just to house all yeah. the stuff. And that's like, the thing we're, we're, yeah. we're putting more time into the main GameFound page than we would a Kickstarter page to get but those listings But then it's up. also the pledge manager and we don't have to build a site. And, yeah. But like, yeah. but that's saving us so much work in other places that we've had to do before. Yeah. Um, and it lets us have, again, like the exact listings there instead of having to send people to a different place and like do a lot of weird jumping around to like figure out what you want to get. Um, well, that's my next one. So, the, so Wicked Donuts is saying the video kind of was good. It's still hard to know what's in all the builds. Like, how do I make this? So, the sample builds seems like we can never have enough, right? Some. Hey, this is this set plus people, this plus this set makes a whatever. People have brought up a couple times that uh, many times they're still doing it. Uh, mm -hmm. That one of the issues was not being able to full screen and like zoom in on the pictures. That's a thing I've brought up to GameFound. Uh, so I th I'm hoping that's a thing that they can because whenever we brought up stuff like this, they've been like, okay, we'll put that on like our board of like stuff to uh, uh, stuff to do. So I mean, if they can get that added, then yeah, the cool. pictures. Yeah, being able to like full screen. Uh, that's photos. a that's a big that is a thing. It's very like, big for us. That's a, for, I think I think yeah. it doesn't I think it's a thing that doesn't come up for most of their users because usually it's people selling board games. The board game box it doesn't like. Yeah, usually <laughs> there's no reason to like blow up and like yeah. really look at the details on it. For something like a for, like for something like what we do, there is. So yeah. yeah. And you know if if they can't if they can't implement larger images, uh, so the, sorry the question so. E, the complaint was, in case we didn't actually clearly say it, is you can't you can't see the images large of the of the stuff in the listings in the listings themselves or whatever. And there are stuff generally you want to have a nice big image you can zoom in and see all the stuff, whatever. So if they can't implement that, it's also that's a relatively easy thing to put up a gallery mm -hmm. of, with high res images if we need to. It's not yeah. as convenient as being able to click in full screen, but, but and I think the most intuitive thing would be being able to click on an image and blow it up. Um, yeah, so hopefully, I'm huge. hoping that they was, can do that. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Was Game Found new videos or reused previous stuff, even though the packs were slightly changed? So we made uh, we made some extremely thorough, like definitely like the most <laughs> the most thorough getting started videos, just because Wildlands are is just a lot more complicated than any of the other stuff we'd done getting started oh. videos for up to this point. Um, we did like some new, very thorough ones where it's like this is supposed to be evergreen stuff that we can now use on the store forever to cover. All of our wilderness stuff. Well, because we've had these, this is our second go around as is reforged, yeah. right? We got to go back in, tweak some of the sets, say, hey, what is the stuff that's going to make sense for evergreen, and then make videos that can hopefully be evergreen. Mm. Um, Here's the parts list. Yeah, mm. that could be. That would be amazing. 
advice for kids to make this. And a lot of that too, if we did a regular campaign, what we usually do in campaigns is we have things like sample builds where we, we have like a, a gallery for that stuff. We didn't have the resources at the time to do that for this. Uh, oh. But if we did a main campaign on there and we again had the full team actually working on it and we had like a regular campaigns worth of time, we would have something like that. That that's that's one of the things that got cut, just because we did this very like we had to do this very quickly to make sure that we hit mm. the production window that we're trying to hit to get this stuff out before Chinese New Year, um, and a lot of that stuff. And just the fact that like you know most of the team is working on three other projects right now, <laughs> so yeah. Well, that's what is neat is we are able to do it without stopping momentum on everything else that's yeah. Working. This didn't get in the yeah. way of developing sci-fi or the board game or high town like or low town production or low town production yeah. like all the we didn't stop anything else that we were working on to do this um for better or worse which is really neat <laughs> oh so... when is the pledge manager going live uh so the only thing we still have to do for the pledge manager to go up is to wait 15 days because they they ask for two weeks to get all the, payment. the funds yeah to get all the payment process kickstarter does this as well it's just kind of a standard thing like to be able to track down anybody's like pledges that like didn't go through give them a chance to like change the payment method or whatever so we've got like two weeks of having to um of having to like wait for all this stuff to process uh and then we're planning to basically go up as soon as we can uh so we're shooting right now for september 12th is when we're planning to yep. launch it um it'll be the same page so you literally just go to like that so game page and it's like right there it's going to be all the same listings you saw except we're planning on adding paint bundles yep uh, so we're going to have some paint bundles added in there. That's basically it. Um, you'll be able to change what your money went to. You'll be able to add more stuff to it if you want. Uh, or you can just say like, yeah, keep all the stuff that I had. I had it figured out in the campaign. Done. Just let me pay the shipping on this and then I'm out. Um, and we're planning to run it until the end of the month. I think the 29th or the 30th, 28th through the 30th, somewhere there. Yep. Uh, we're planning to then close it so that we and can we'll, get the final we'll send order. an update out as it gets closer to confirm but right now yeah. september 12th is the plan for through the end of the month which the lower patch had links to each of the individual component packs and that stuff is filterable yeah. uh they did you yeah when you look at the you large could those little you could cook the little yeah. thumbnails of the having a having a parts list for the sets that tells you like what the pieces are and then would be useful uh that well, was again just the thing that we did not have time well for. a backer friendly spreadsheet you know, this, we did have that. A lot of this yeah. stuff is very spreadsheety, right? Like here's, yeah. Like it's not as, it's not necessarily something I could implement in GameFound, but it's like, hey, we could deliver like Tyler's backer friendly spreadsheet for each thing and say, hey, here's, here's all the data if you want to poke at it with filters. Or Why could it not calculate shipping during the campaign? Uh, that was a thing that they just didn't have as a feature. We actually brought that up to them before uh, launching uh, Reforge. And uh, so they actually are going to make it part of the platform uh, in the future. It just, they couldn't get it done in time for this. Um, so, you know, so we made our, we made our shipping calculator the, the way that we usually do. Cause Kickstarter also doesn't do it. Uh, it lets you set like, I think it lets you set like default shipping stuff, but like to yeah, do the kind of shipping calculation that we have. It's not, doesn't work for yeah, us. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. work for us. So like literally when we brought this up and talked to GameFound about this, like they're literally working on being able to add this as a feature. And I don't think any other platform has it as a feature for the, for the campaign uh, section currently. I see. Filter, the filter request is to show, like we had, we had some pretty robust oh, man. filters in the pledge manager for, so you could see what was in each set and, and yeah, uh, I think the, not. Oh man, yeah. That's just that's asking. A, that's a good question. Why? Well, yeah. Well, yeah. We'll have to see if they. But that is a thing. If we're gonna, you know, if we can set for a high town filters. level thing, we need. We do need a way. If we're gonna have the 150 sets or whatever the hell it was, it's like we need a yeah. way to filter through, uh, filter through that stuff in an intelligent way, not on the spreadsheet. Um, blown. Yeah. Yeah, well, we get there. We have a little time for high town. But yeah. Um, Plans to keep the mini site for Colt alive. Uh, maybe I'll have to check with them. I'm not sure. Uh, I think it's isn't it dwarvenforge.com/cities should take you there. It should. Uh, it might have. Uh, have you have you tried that dwarvenforge.com/cities? 
If not, it might have gotten broken during the mm. just all the all the work that's being done on it right now. We can ask Luke to put it back if it's. Uh, yeah, I don't missing. think there was any plans to like kill it. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Citiesuntold.dwarfforge.com. Uh, it should be both. We we it should we, re. We tried to have an easy URL that would send that would redirect. All right, now so, yeah, they they typed that in and it worked. So yeah. Um. Uh. Okay. What else? Uh, um. Uh. Stretch pay. Seems like an amazing thing saw, to have. I saw a Do lot of anecdotal let... stuff, and even people saying it in this chat. Even I saw a lot of anecdotal stuff saying that they got a lot more because they could do stretch pay. Some people saying they could have paid it all at once, but they chose stretch pay anyways. But I will tell you, about half the money we raised, like, like literally, it's like 48% of the money that was pledged was done through stretch pay. 48? Yeah, like basically half. about half. Basically about half of the That's funds wild. Through stretch pay. Yeah. Oh. And so if you, if you figure that maybe on average the pledges were 25% bigger than because they could do stretch pay or something and i think that's being very conservative with it like or or like, just let more people participate or it, yeah. you dodge more spouse aggro or whatever like it it gets it seems like it's a very really useful tool 50 percent of people are using it that's wild um, uh does stretch pay introduce any risk or cost to the df team uh no the the only the only way it would cause a risk is if we like sent you your stuff before you finished stretch paying but that's also why we set it for the four months is so that we would have them all resolved before we ship anything. Um, yeah. Like, oh. that's... Because that way, I mean, you know, if, if somebody doesn't pay through or gets it refunded or something, then we just don't ship the stuff, you know? Um, Jeffrey is saying we should shout it from the rooftop, right? That, like, stretch pay is really a game changer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll pay... I'm glad you pay you Tuesday for a hamburger steak. Yeah. But it's, and also, like, in terms of, like, through. workload and everything, like, GameFound handles that entirely on their end. Uh, it, it really, it introduces no complications for us. Like, the, the only, I think the only reason it would become an issue is if we really needed that money immediately, but we're, we don't, so we're, no. we're fine. Um, we, uh, are we going to offer stretch storage, where people get more storage each month uh, as the stuff arrives because they're running out of storage space? Yeah. Maybe. Oh, <laughs> Uh, That's uh, I'm trying to picture what seventy pounds of Dwarven Forge is going to be by volume. Uh, a lot. It's just going to be a lot of boxes. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be a lot of boxes. Hey, we got someone to first time chat. How much they love stretch pay? This love is stretch awesome. pay. Welcome, Dalton. I don't think I've heard anybody say no. they didn't say that they disliked well, the stretch thing. pay. Was there? Don't use it if you don't yeah, want. You just, yeah, you, <laughs> like, yeah, you just don't. It use doesn't it if you take don't want. away anything from the rare experience. It just that's, adds that's, another yeah. option to people. Yeah. That's that's the main thing that I was like. Yeah, I I just hope. Nobody, and I worry about this with every campaign we run. I just hope nobody yeah. puts themselves in like a tough financial situation for this stuff. Yeah. Like, can you use well, that's pay the, in the thing is you don't want it impact? to be a, you don't want people to go in deeper than they should. Is Yeah. You can use stretch pay in the pledge manager. Uh, the way it works though is you can only have one stretch pay open at a time. So if you used stretch pay in the campaign, uh, you would need to pay that out before you could use it in the pledge manager. Um, but if you if you if you just did a regular payment in the campaign, then you can do stretch pay uh, as one of the pledge manager checkouts, uh, if you would like. Um, so yeah, you can you can use it at any time. Um, it's just you can only have one going at a time. And uh, PayPal is coming, too, right? They're implementing. They just started beta testing PayPal in the EU to see if that like PayPal integration in the EU. Um, and you know, with hopes of like, cool, if that goes smoothly, they can roll it out to like the rest. And they're working on a lot of other payment options as well. They do like frequent updates. They they're working on like a lot of. Uh... They've already updated more their site more <laughs> since we've been on it than Kickstarter has the entire like ten years. <laughs> no. Unbelievable. Uh, it's awesome. It's very well in the Kickstarter I've been involved in, but I still pick Stretch Pay because it just makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, I think for a lot of people, there are several people who said that they could have paid it all at once, but. It's nice to, and I was talking with Letitia about it earlier, and she was saying that, like, you know, um, she'll choose, like, to, especially if there's no extra fees or, like, interest involved or anything. She's like, why not? Doing, like, the PayPal, like, pay and for thing. It's like, yeah. Just to, like, stretch it out more. Yeah. Like, it's, yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's um, like, easier to swallow. Made it feel much more accessible and interested in stretch goals. 
Stretch pay allowed me to pay what I probably would have spent at once over a bit of time. Yeah, so yeah, that's what you're saying there. So you you would have spent it all at once, but it's letting you sp sp spread it yeah. out more so that it's not as urgent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, can you do vice versa, meaning flat out buy add-ons if you pick stretch pay? Flat out buy add-ons if you pick stretch yeah, pay. Yeah, I think you can just yeah you can use pledge for anything. Yeah, you can use it. stretch pay for any checkout you want as long as it's over a hundred dollars. To um, me, that I'll tell you the segueing out of stretch pay into just pledging for whatever the hell you want is just the best feature to be able to and it's. Wait, I don't think we advertise it as well as we could. It just You can just show up to the site and just say, hey, I just want this add-on and call it a day. Or, hey, I want these three add-ons and get out of there. Like, it's just such a flexible, like not having to have 47 different pledge levels for all this mm -hmm. nonsense is amazing. Being able to just, yeah, you just custom make your pledge based on what you actually want. Oh, it's um, like, <laughs> and you can do it right there. Tick, 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 tick. It's, it's so uh... good. Yeah, you wouldn't be able to use PayPal for stretch pay, I believe, but you can use it for like a regular checkout uh, in the beta currently. Uh, wow. If I did stretch pay already, am I needing to choose it again in the PM? Uh, no. You can uh, only have one running, right? Yeah, you can only have one running. So that stretch pay will keep running for what you did in the campaign. Um, and then any further checkouts you do in the PM, uh, you can just do as one-time payments. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, we need to do our um, giveaways. Do our giveaways. Uh, Ways is this? Somebody plural. explained stretch pay would be a good giveaway word. It would be. Let's do that for the gift card, and then we'll do let's the book. Do it. All right. Stretch pay. All right. Uh, if you want a chance to win a fifty dollars Dwarven Forge gift card, type stretch pay as one word in the chat. Time to kill the chat. Oh God. Right. Uh, read everything you can before this goes away. Oh, Mastagon had it. Well, uh, it feels less, less like you're building your campaign you around the platform. Instead, you're building the campaign the way you want. Oh, God, And then gone. the platform builds. Oh, oh there, there it goes. goes. Hey, goodbye, Mastagon. <laughs> um, uh, let me get everything that was on. It's just more <laughs> stuff saying stretch pay was good. Yeah. Uh, so I used to participate pledge level. Game found's kind of different. Since pledges and add-ons are kind of the same. Uh, yeah, there's, yeah. yeah, we don't have to have like a $10 like so much easier into the thing. The whole I want unpainted pledge five dollars and figured out thing was odd on Kickstarter. Yeah, and we yes. could have handled that better ourselves. But the main thing is just it really feels like it just got rid of a layer of complexity Absolutely. that we just didn't need to have. Like, um, it, yeah, yeah. Well, you don't like you say like Masticon was saying we don't have to design the campaign around the limitations of a site. We can just sort of we are still designing it for how GameFound works. We just feel less yes, restricted. Yes, but it's. It's a much more free. There's always going to be constraints. It feels like it has more flexible tools. The yes. fact that we can embed videos, the fact that we can... We well, just put all the um, listings up there. We the fact can, that we have, we fact that we have anchor things. links and we can design sections with anchor links is big. How was the site navigation? Was it helpful to be able to have... There was anchor links. Like you could just click on a thing and it goes right and to And here's that another thing, thing too, uh, in regards to like Finley asking if it could handle all those, if doing like a low town size number of sets. Um, it absolutely could. We could put that many on there. It just, you know, it would make it like a long scroll, uh, but you'd have the anchor links there. Yep, uh, so that, that's really the thing, is us just having to look at, like, how many sets is it worth making Compressed to put up there. Pay. Um, and, uh, but I don't know, if we did something like sci-fi on GameFound, there would be way less sets. So I think it would actually be way easier to navigate. The page was still kind of big, dense. It yes. is. And that's because, again, we still had, like, 100 listings because we had 50 sets, painted and unpainted. But like, at least there's their anchor links. You could jump to whatever you needed to. Yeah. I, it was not, it's 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 just as bad a scroll if you scroll down the GameFound page as it is if you scroll down the Kickstarter page. The difference is yeah. there's the little menu on the side. You can jump to wherever you need to. But like with, you know, if, if we do sci-fi on there, there's not going to be 50 sets. So it'll be way easier to navigate in yeah. that sense. Um, Agree. Bigger images. Yeah, bigger images is a big thing. Bigger images, bigger images. Uh, the navigation very, uh, back and forth between bundles and, item, and component items seems to be a recurring thing that wasn't as smooth as people wanted. Why not put the quantity adjustment next to add pledge? Uh, that's not a bad idea. I think I think mm. it's just a thing that hasn't come up much because of the nature of what they've usually had on the platform, which is like board games. I think they're just not used to people having to do that usually. we run a very different campaign yeah. than most of the things a lot of a lot of this has been them adjusting to the fact that we are doing a very different thing yeah. than than what most of the even like when dungeons and lasers did their terrain on there their terrain was still more of a buy this box of the terrain set yeah. versus like 
here's 50 different <laughs> collections of pieces you can get you know so yep. they, like genuinely i don't think that they've had somebody on their platform before who has wanted to use as many things as we have um so it, they're still like kind of learning from us uh and, and all that in that respect but they're also willing to like talk to us about it and work on features so we can probably work mm-hmm. on a lot of that stuff rabbit's um, asking if we would if we did a low town size game found would we still have a microsite you know what i think we would probably have an inf- a educational microsite yes i think like sort of the breakdown of you know here's the scaffolding system here's the whatever or, you know high town here's the buttress system here's the walls here's the whatever like i think that's still like we'd want a, some way to navigate around and get all the information that would probably be separate, but it wouldn't be having to build a giant store and having to build a whatever. But yeah, thanks. Um, if I want to look at the sets way more often than the text, I wonder if having the sets higher up in the description stuff after it would work better. Maybe, um, yeah. it's possible. Uh, and then you know that's part of it. Like this is also this is the worst we're ever going to be at using the game it's found true. system. More sandbox build Q and A streams would help visualize for sure. Yeah, that we just is, didn't that's have the re- just an absolute given. We just didn't have the resources, but if we did like a new product campaign, you can bet we'd be doing a lot of that stuff, yep. like, like usual. But uh, we just did not. Agree, we just didn't have the resources for it this time. Yeah. Stormforge so considered a subscription service. We get asked about that a lot. It is just not feasible. Not it's just not good. feasible for us. Um, it takes a lot of. You've got to have a lot of capital that you can burn to start that kind of thing. Well, up. and also we got to make sure people are getting the things that are useful to them and if they and like we don't have the infrastructure to We would need a much a thing, larger like, we need a much larger fan yeah. base too. It's a really neat idea. It would be fun as hell every month to get a box of random DF stuff. Like yeah. I, I, absolutely I see the appeal. It would be really neat. It's not in our uh, um, not in our capabilities currently. Yeah, I think but the microsite thing I think the microsite thing is still a situation where for a new product campaign, it still makes a lot of sense to have something like that. Yep. Um, it is just like, again, a lot of this stuff is less like we don't want to do it anymore and more we needed to, it's just, this wasn't a new product uh, yeah. campaign and we had a lot less resources to devote to it. Well, uh, we didn't have a, we already had the information to explain a lot of the stuff and yeah. It's almost like it wants to be several pages. Uh Yeah. This is all wonderful. This is yeah. this is this is the best. Like have, this is wonderful feedback. Mints on new sets is all. Uh, yeah, yeah. potentially. I, I, again, like it was, we like this whole project from like conception to launch, the turnaround was like two months. Uh, two two months with like a very very skeleton crew, so we just did not. It, it, we really just had to focus on the essentials to get this thing up. And there were probably there's there's a, there a lot of stuff that like had we had the time and the resources to do, we 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 would have done additionally. Well, the problem is we would have just we would have launched it in February if we you know yeah <laughs> if we'd started doing more stuff it was just sort of the extra was like just get it up so we can test game found we can test this concept we can test this whatever like let's not make it a bigger thing than it is like let's just get it up mm-hmm. and see what happens yeah um, uh, a summer intern paid in DF style. All right, let's roll this yeah. giveaway. I'm going to roll the giveaway. If you have not typed stretch pay in uh, for a chance to win a $50 stretch pay. Forge gift card, uh, oh. you got like 10 more seconds. We're sending Real Art, Real Art Day a, uh, a oh, box MDMA, of bronze. MDMA, seeing your name reminded me. You asked earlier. Uh, I'll answer this after I roll. Yeah. Uh, let it ride. Susalam. Congratulations, Susalam. Congrats. Uh, I'm going to whisper you real quick. I'm pretty sure we've already got your email from you winning before. Yes. Woo! Uh, I'm just going to double check that you want the same email. And then we are good. Um, you yeah, you asked if you if you thought doing a project like Lowtown, if we would have made less if we were on GameFound versus Kickstarter. I think in general, I, I really think the difference is negligible. Um... I think we're going to find out. Yeah, I guess that's the main thing, is we really won't know until we actually really try the thing. But I haven't seen any evidence that... Yeah, I just don't think that organic discoverability is a huge selling point of any crowdfunding platform at this point. Um, 
but we will. Uh, we'll find I'm out. I'm going to put it up to it to put it to the test. I think the main thing was still people that we had, you know, because most of the pledges in Lowtown were still people who had bought from our store before yep. or had backed a previous Kickstarter. Um, it, like the the big the big thing that we took away is like a huge improvement. Like takeaway from Lowtown was we had more people convert from only web store purchases that had never done a Kickstarter before compared to past Kickstarters. Yeah. Like a, over a third of the pledges were from people who had been getting web store stuff and this was their first Kickstarter. That was awesome. Um, and that was a big jump over like previous campaigns, uh, which just showed that like the work that we were putting into growing the web store and like reaching people in between campaigns was like paying off. But I think the main thing is still just, yeah, like we, we bring in our own audience and so I think that's going to be the same no matter where we go. I don't think it's going to have a, a massive, a massive impact on the on the total funding. All right, we need a giveaway word. It for seems this like book. unless yeah. you know, we haven't we haven't actually sat down and talked about it as a team, but it seems like unless someone can come up with a really good strong red flag, we'll do sci-fi on Game Town and try, you know try a new product plat and see what it's like on there, and we go from there. Uh, for the book, we doing the book. Yeah, uh, Wilderness Encounter thinks that the word should be Mace rules. Agree. Mace does rule. All right. Is Mace still here? Uh, probably not. She usually checks out after. If she's not here, then we have half to hour change or so. it. <laughs> Mace no longer uh, rules. Don't let's agree. Oh uh, yeah, if you want a chance to, uh, you, this is U.S. only. U.S. only. The tremendous tome of epic dungeons. It's got a. It's a coffee table book, of cool terrain builds. Largely, uh. A lot of them used Dwarven Forge. Some of them are builds that that that, that I made or the team made. Um, MVC Charles. We just we just we need to ship this to a U.S. address is the only thing. Uh, so even if you are overseas, if you have a U.S. friend that can forward it to you and we can ship it to them, there's that. Oh, rabbits out. Sorry, hey, rabbit books know, are for kids. Rabbit, here's you we'll actually do. can buy this. This is for sale, uh, yeah. so you actually can buy this. But yeah, oh, there it goes. Uh, oh god, we're losing the chat. Really liked in the microsite, you can select the district and then drill down to it. Sets it was made up in the content that says yep. it was powerful and so useful. Yeah, and we, we got a mi we got a mini version of that with the reforged things in um with, with the reforged bundles on the game found page, but it's not quite the same thing. But we'll have to figure out you know if we're doing if we do high town on game found, we're gonna have to figure out how to handle like yeah, that's that is the thing. We need to make sure people can drill in to mm -hmm. all these sets in a in a way that makes sense. But we uh, get there. What sort of timeline are we looking at for High Town now? If we have sci fi February or if we have sci fi in March and we're here is there around September, it's High Town for twenty twenty five. Twenty twenty five. Well it gives us we need to get we need to get low town delivered. Um and then get this game out, and then it should be the next one. But what are our our theory? Our theory is that we can uh, we're going to more seamlessly go from one project into the next. Um, we're sort of staggering out how the teams are working, and um, conceptually, it's you know while sci-fi is cooking, we're full steam ahead on the game, and while the game is is crowdfunding, we're full steam ahead on high town and you know dev is still moving forward it's a matter of like getting the campaign prepped right that's the sort of sort of right now with the idea is dev is getting ahead of everything so that then there's sort of a backlog of projects that then just need to go into the into the crowdfunding prep machine right get go through graphics and video and marketing and prep so those are going and then while well, the next thing is ready and so as soon as that is done then the next one gets handed off to team to prep for uh, for crowdfunding stuff so we'll see how that all works out, uh, but I, I think it's I think it's going to work really well. I think we're we're setting ourselves up to be able to pull it off. And mm -hmm. It's going to be cool, and uh, you know, eh, everything could change in the next twelve months. Like mm -hmm. we're, this is the current plan. Let's we'll see how it goes. Uh, yeah, Merck. In regards to the foreign currency fees, it seems like that's just a thing that happens with Visa specifically. I don't know. It's a thing I'm looking into. Um, yeah, yeah. To see if there's anything to be done with that, but it, it seems like it's not a game found thing. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to understand it better. Uh, Rabbit's boycotting the the book because he doesn't <laughs> have any pictures today. It feels like a really. I mean, yeah. one of the builds kind of looks like a rabbit build. Two of them actually. So this castle. Yeah. The um, 
In the past, you've said you won't have one project outstanding while another is running. Could you be practical here that that won't necessarily be the case going forward? The King Sci-Fi, Dungeon Reforged, High Town. So that is that. So going forward, so the theory is we don't want to have one. We don't want to have uh, an outstanding project of the same type going. So in other words, our theory is we can we're going to do sci-fi because it's. It's sci-fi terrain. It's not fantasy terrain. So somehow it feels different. It's also and probably a, way a bunch of different factors. It's also a much smaller project. But we won't run High Town until Low Town is delivered. But like, let's say this board game does really well, and we want to do another board game. We wouldn't do that until this board game has delivered something like that. That's at least the current kind of methodology. Is you don't want to you don't want to ask say like we wouldn't do a second. Let's say sci-fi just blows the roof off a game found, and everybody's all fired up. We wouldn't then immediately start a, start a big sci-fi campaign before the small one had delivered. Say like, okay, you got some stuff, but now before you even have it, here's the next, you know, we want even more space, more space. So we'll give you, we'll make sure the sci-fi stuff delivers before we do another sci-fi run. Yeah. But that also could evolve as we go. I mean, there's a bunch of companies that are serial Kickstarter companies that overlap. And I think also um, a big reason. Not that that means we should do it, but. I think also a big reason for it too is like we don't want to uh by the time that we do sci-fi like they're going to be done with the molds and stuff for for low town yeah so like it's not going to be they're not going to be competing for the same resources or space or anything we're not going to be at risk of like suddenly being unable to deliver uh i mean it should be on the water yeah, or be really close to get it being on the water at that point. And... Lotan will be very close to like. Yeah, yeah, we'll be getting we'll be getting close yeah. to delivering by that point. April will be on the water, shipping in June or something, or hopefully, yeah. we're supposed to. Yeah, something like that. It, it'll it's around that around that realm. But yeah, we're we're we want to be conscious to not a we don't want to bite off more than we can chew. Imagine Dwarven Forge ever doing that. Uh, but we and we don't want to we don't want to be have too much. We don't want to be on the hook for too much stuff. Um, before doing the next one, and we also honestly we don't have the bandwidth as a company to overlap project projects that rapidly. I don't know how some of these companies do it, where they can just keep churning a thing out over and over and over. Like we're we do not have that capability. It takes us a long time to brew a thing. Um, so I I don't think we're in danger of I don't know, not until we if we somehow like quadrupled in size that we could or something. That's not gonna happen. Yeah. That, that that's the main thing is like we want to make sure everything is stable and yeah. that's but that's been a big reason for not development's expensive development is very expensive which is why we need to do these campaigns in the first place well and so it's just figuring out well and we make it yeah. expensive too like we're we we really we really want to make sure we we want to make we basically iterate until we run out of time right we want to just make things mm -hmm. as polished as possible and as thought out as possible. And there's still problems. I mean, there's still, we're not, we're far from perfect, but we're, we really devote a lot of time and energy towards trying to, you know, work on all the minutia, like at every, every stage. And it's important to the, uh, it's important to the model. Right? And I think you guys respond to it, right? People feel they're like, this is just, you know, there's so much love and passion and excitement and detail and meticulousness in this. And then they'll be like, well, why did you do this stupid thing? <laughs> You're like, well, I don't know, we're human. Yeah. We ran out of, you ran out of energy or time or you missed the thing or whatever. Yeah. When do you all have spell sci-fi jammer? Oh, boy. Uh, well, I mean, it'll basically just... It'll be part of the modular ships. Sad? Yes. <laughs> Don't you have a job to unretire to or something? Come on. <laughs> Heckling us. Go back to work. <laughs> go back to... Just go, just go, up to, go up to anybody who's like go get retired. a job. <laughs> any, any anybody who's made it to the point where they're actually able to just where they can sit back and be on social security and just like yes, and hang out and watch the stream. Yeah, the heck those start start modular ships. No, the best. The Griffins are are dynamite. So they <laughs> can't do that. High Town Spelljammer Tower Ship Dock. Ooh, now that is a. I mean, if we do modular ships, there's no reason not to, because it'll it'll just take a couple extra pieces to make it Spelljammer ships. Oh, you know people are gonna beg for a nautiloid though, and a, like there's just oh. big stretch goal. You know, the problem is I just don't like spell chamber. Anyway, and there's I no reason for I, it. Okay, modular ships though. I'm I'm into modular 
like boats that go in the water, not in the space water. Like just the, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. We already know we can make airship docks. You just take the floor and you put it around a tower. Yeah, I can see. But airships are okay. They're just not spaceships. You gotta have as long as you keep it, like as long as you can still see land, you're okay. Sure. Or water. Or whatever. I don't know. There's no rule. It's true. You signed, uh, you signed Jeffrey Spelljammer book, so. I did what? You signed, I did. Yeah. Oh, we should probably sign that book before we send it off. Yeah. Let's sign Mace's name. Um, just Mace. It, it, yeah. We get everybody in the office except just Mace just tying Mace. Mace's name. <laughs> yeah, 13, we should have 13 sign Maces it. and none, none of them are her. Uh, so good. Right, let's, let's roll this. Let's control. roll it. Mace rules. Last chance. Mace rules. Uh, we can only ship to U.S. address. If you're overseas, make sure you have a uh, friend in the U.S. that can forward it for you. Um, last chance to enter for the tremendous tome of Epic Dungeons. This is the best. Signed by Mace. Mace. <laughs> just, give, just give Mace an extra responsibility. Yeah. I love it. She loves having extra stuff dumped on her. Mace, wait, All Rabbit, right. why are you in Rabbit. He, he, well, he probably has a friend in the US. Yeah. We'll hold it for he'll, him. He'll, say, he he'll, he'll, go like, he'll go like, yeah, just uh, forward it to insert Dwarven Ford shipping address. He's like, yeah, I know I know somebody <laughs> there who can forward it to me. You know? The best. All right, let's roll it. Do rabbit watch, it, watch, it, watch it be Rabbit. It's going to be amazing. Watch it be Rabbit. Give you the base. Ah, oh, it's crab battle. Woo! I mean, I'm really happy for you. Really happy for you, crab battle. But it should have. It would have been so. It would have been so funny if it was rabbit. It would have. It would have been. Congrats. That's it. It would have been really funny. That's it. <laughs> that's it. We're not taking away your awesome victory. Oh, amazing. That's how you know we don't rig things. If 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 we rigged things, right? I would have. I would have really quickly set it up. So that Can rabbit you write won. some code to rig a, a, a contest for us? That would be awesome. I don't got to do code. I know you're good at that. You can just yeah. click around and disqualify people and stuff. Yeah. Totally. That's how I make sure Stefan never wins. <laughs> can you really disqualify people? Yeah. Mm. You can You can uncheck people and everything so that you can... So six if there, of clubs, if somebody, we know what the secret is. <laughs> well, yeah. like if there's, you know, if there's somebody like who's brigading or something. Yeah. Like, What's a brigade? Uh, Just a lot of people coming in. Uh, and it's very clear, like they all came for, or they're using like thing. bot accounts or something, or it's yeah. Uh, hmm. Oh, the internet! The more I learn, the less I like it. I love every time Crab Battle's name shows up because I know exactly what it's referencing. Um, <laughs> Wait, you get a notice when you get disqualified? Is it Rabbit said you you disqualified don't. in the past. I forgot you disqualified me in the past. We we disqualified him before because <laughs> there was something U.S. based. Oh, it was for the, the anniversary D and D game. You said Rabbit couldn't do it because we were gonna be playing the game at like one o'clock his time or something. Right. Yeah. He'll never forget. <laughs> oh. We have to do it we have to do the Europe game. Oh, it's because he'd never played D D. Oh yeah, there was that. That's that's yeah. what it was. That's what it was. <laughs> we we were saying like you have to know D D. Yeah, that's know, what it they was. They would do a rapid fire, like we gotta just be able to go. Although honestly it was Pretty rules light. He you would have been fine, but yeah. that was barely D and D. We'll we'll un, un we'll undisqualify you right now, okay? <laughs> Whenever we actually do an anniversary yeah. game again, the fifth anniversary we'll do something. Yeah. <laughs> not the, the fourth. The fourth anniversary. Coming back to the fourth anniversary is nothing. Oh, just not played this shit. millennium. You'd played like first or second edition, right? But again, it was it was, it was barely D and D. Yeah. Some would say rapid fire roll a D twenty. Some yeah. would say some transcended D and D. I would say some would say. Uh, 5e was already barely D&D. Oh, I don't agree, but no, some would say. I don't. I think it's one of the best. Let's start. Stuff. Let's start that argument in this chat. Oh. Yeah. No. <laughs> um. Uh, played, other things about game found that were amazing. What other things about game found? Yeah. What do you? What's up on your list? Um, list? I don't I have many. Uh, one thing that I thought was neat was um, being able to send updates to people who follow the page, so you can start giving information out before the thing goes live, right? They're, they're, being, they're being able, able to, to preview stuff. and build and then send updates to those people and tell them you're live. Like it, it really, it makes it a, you can actually have a page up months ahead of time. Like this just seems really a yeah. great way to gather eyeballs and we, inform people. That, that, and that's, awesome. that's, that's one thing. Like we could, for sci-fi, we could set up the sci-fi page in like November or something if we want. And then if people come across it, naturally on the game found page they can follow and we can send out updates over time as things are getting closer like yeah. we, we can we can do that yeah um 
we didn't have enough time to really make a ton of use of it this time. Well, it, I, um, I hadn't even really processed the idea that you could you could send updates. That it'd be, it's a live thing. Them, yeah. That it's like a yeah, like yeah. it was. Yeah, people people will have pages open for like a year before. Yeah, it's um, it's, it's brilliant. It's amazing. Like you yeah. can, it's really um, you know it helps that discoverability in a way. Also, um, the update system is just a lot. The update, the update backend that they have is just a lot better than Kickstarter's as well. We're able to draft all that stuff out ahead of time and just save it there and set it live when we want. It's um, it so it lets us know uh, how many people that update reached, how many people clicked through to it. All your stats. It lets us right, know right if, there, like on a little. It lets us know if people like if that update drove people to get it. things. And, like yeah. how much money we made off of people like seeing that update and going like, oh cool, I want to get that. And yeah, like, oh it's really it's really neat. Yeah. Um. But so I think the being able to put the page up early seemed like somebody was already helpful. Um, and then uh, who was saying it? Uh, it's, oh, it, oh no, we kept the fact that everything was up beforehand made my life way that easier. Was it. Thank Mastodon. you. Yeah, it was Mastodon. Yay! I think it helped. I think it yeah. helped with the sticker shock for people too. I yeah. think it would help with sticker shock in the future if you're able to see like well ahead of time. Ooh. I mean, this is what the prices are going to be. You know, what do you guys prefer about Kickstarter? Uh, Brand recognition. I like that their main right. color is green. Wait no, a minute. No, it's gross. Wait a minute. I like the, no, just people, more people know what Kickstarter is than Game Time. A lot of people will, thing. it's the Kleenex of crowdfunding. So yes. a lot of people will still refer to your campaign on Game Time as a Kickstarter. Yeah. Uh, they'll just say Kickstarter instead of crowdfunding campaign. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, honestly, I don't, there is nothing I enjoy about the platform. I, you know, I, I can't think of a, uh, they, oh, reply, no, reply to that they have in game phone. Uh, you know what I like? Six years ago, they had a live stream thing built in and it would have it right on the page. So you would say next stream starting at this time. And so anybody that went to the page would know it was starting and then it would be there on the page. And then when it was done, it would say your stream was here and it would be all, it was a really neat feature that they cut like six years ago or whatever in, in uh, Dungeon of Doom. They had it. It was Doom Dead by Cavern's Deep. <laughs> that was, I really liked that. Um, the, I, I'm just like going through the, 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 the parts of it. I think for some people, it, well, I don't know if this is necessarily a Kickstarter question. being, a good... I guess I don't know if it's necessarily something that's better about Kickstarter or just people are used to it. There were some people who were a little initially confused about how the game found works just because they were expecting it to, they, they were like, they were expecting to just be able to like select a pledge level, put their money in or whatever. It's slightly clunkier. Like when you're used to Kickstarter, it feels a little clunkier. But I think a lot like, of that is genuinely just because you're expecting Kickstarter. It's, it's a different platform. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Um, I, so you know, some people thought that they were finalizing their pledge yeah. by submitting it and stuff like that. But I think a lot of that is not necessarily the platform being better I mean, versus just you know needing many, to get used to a new thing. You know, how many people are confused on Kickstarter too. Like it's not yeah, like fair. Yeah. No, honestly, I don't see like. Uh, yeah, I've I mean, I've been sick of Kickstarter for years, so I'm I'm very happy to have an alternative. Um, and it really just like feels the... like it's sort of solving. It's doing. It's, it feels like they're building the platform to be friendly to the creators and have all the things that actual creators who are actually using it and using it to make a living need. And I, they're responsive and they're, I don't know. I, I don't want to trash talk Kickstarter, but. No. Have you shared the pros of Kickstarter and given them the feedback? Curious only with the question. Uh, no, we haven't talked to them. Uh, We've asked them for stuff for ages. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. you know, we're, we've yeah, asked we're not, them for features like, for a while, and they're just like, Meh. yeah, we're not we're not really in regular contact with them. No. Uh, you missed the anchors, I think. So it felt like doom scrolling. Oh yeah, if you missed the anchor links, that's rough. Yes, there are supposed to be anchor links on this on the left side of the page. Is it different on mobile? Is it a drop down menu on the mobile? How it is go- different on mobile, and I can't remember. Yeah, how do they do it on mobile? Because I know on the anchor link, like on desktop, anchor links yeah. are on the left side. Yeah, I don't remember what it was. That's oh, that's that's something. Uh, Kickstarter has a really nice app. The uh, mm. 
the KS app is really good. Um, although they also, you used to be able to sort of browse through the projects. You could swipe, when you had the project and you could swipe across them now and you can't, you have to like close them and then slip and open the next one and whatever. And it's, <laughs> once again, they made, they took away a feature that I like. I just, but, I just use apps so um, rarely. I'm, I'm generally It's a much it better mobile on stuff. mobile. It, it makes the platform much better on mobile when you have the app. Anchor, like okay, so on mobile, the Anchor menu wasn't showing up in portrait mode. It only showed up in landscape. Curious. Okay. Yeah, which look is weird because most people use it in portrait. I think at that point, though, then it's just going to, then it just functions like the Kickstarter yeah. page would on mobile, and it's not really. Yeah, it's not that great. Yeah. That's a good, that is a good one. That, that, that I wonder if that's got. a thing. I wonder if that's yeah. a thing that they're planning to work on. Do they have an app or is it just a mobile site? I don't think I've seen a GameFound app. No, I don't believe so. It's something to ask them. I am curious if that's a thing that yeah. they have. Yeah. Oh, back to school night. Oh, man. Oh. Oh, already? Oi, oi, oi. Good night, Mastica. GameFound doesn't have an app. I'm curious if they're working on one. Yeah. It seems like they would be. Um, let's see. Yeah, that's that's one thing that that KS has that that definitely makes it. It's much easier to browse the thing and and get to it and whatever. I wonder how many people do it mobile. I yeah, it's a thing I've never. I don't think I've ever done any crowdfunding on on mobile before. I, I use my phone for barely anything like app wise. Oh, it's fantastic for checking. Yeah, checking the Kickstarter and seeing the comments and all the. It's like it's so much easier to navigate than their site on mobile. Like it's really, and all your stuff. So right maybe there on a click. And so it's... maybe GameFound just needs an app then. Yeah, I wonder if they're working on it. They probably are. I would be surprised. Asking them. Yeah, I don't know. List of, list of things. Um. All right. What else you got? Uh, we'll run down to the last two. The um, we already sort of touched on it. Too. Just the fact that it's an integrated pledge manager means less work for us, right? We do it once. We do uh whatever. So that's that's a, that's gonna be a pending question for you guys once it goes live. Like, how is the pledge manager experience in GameFound? Like, how does it compare? Is it going to be useful? Like, we'll see. You know, that, that, that'll be an interesting one to compare because we use a third party, right? We use pledgemanager.com for our pledge manager with Kickstarter um, and pay them a bunch of money to build the whole thing. So it'll be interesting to see what the, the free experience is like for people, how it stacks up. Yeah, because in theory, we could also, like, we could use a different we could go to pledgemanager.com pledge manager. or something else back get at the pledge manager we could to. but if if it doesn't if it doesn't cause any downsides just, being able to it's more money more time more energy more everything if it yeah because a huge part because you know we have to import everything into this other site yes but here like i mean literally to launch the pledge manager we gotta put those paint bundles in and get a gallery up right and that's it like yeah we've already got the we've already got the gallery up so it's just kind of we just have to hit, wait for the money to come through and hit launch yeah, like it's that's wild. I mean, um, usually, I mean, literally, it was weeks of building for Pledge Manager. Well, also, part of that is traditionally we add a bunch of new photos and we add a bunch of new sets and we add a bunch of new stuff and whatever. But also, it's porting all this stuff over and testing it and descriptions and tags and whatever. So I don't know. We'll see. Um, yeah, um, that's a good uh, good one. Oh, here's a. Um, oh yeah. Uh, does it mean less cost overall if you're not double paying for Kickstarter and Pledge Manager and you're not paying for Game Time? Yes. It does mean we don't have to pay <laughs> two different people for the same thing. I think the, awesome. I think like the percentage of pledges isn't really different, but it's we're not having to pay like the the start like the cost we don't of making the pay, platform. We don't have to pay Pledge Manager. That's the Yeah, but but I mean like cuz Pledge Manager takes like a percentage of the pledges, no, but isn't there also like a fee on top Jay, of that? Jay negotiated a flat fee. He did some hard bargaining with them. Okay. Uh, well, all right. It was, well, a, it was I mean, a bunch of money. Like it's a, if, it's, yeah. if it's better than I thought, that's not a bad thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I don't know if you know this. Jay likes to uh, bargain a good deal. It's uh, mm -hmm. oh. um, But the, with, with, there was another question we just saw that was, that was a good one. When's the, totally unrelated, when's the post Low Town survey going out? Uh, I was just poking at it today. And uh, we're supposed to have a draft uh, by the end of this week, and then we'll set it out sometime in the next, next week month. or two. Yeah, yeah, it's coming. We haven't for hey, Odin Porsche is here. Stop! You missed the giveaway. Um, how much extra low town will there be? Uh, we're figuring no that out now. Currently, what do you mean how extra low town? I think that like how much of an extra order going into the web store will there be? Oh. 
Yeah. We're not like currently a, figuring that out. Probably now. less than everybody's going to want. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if, if we're lucky, yeah. yeah. Hopefully not yeah. a lot more than people want because then we're in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> we're really going to be in trouble. Wow. Um, so then the last, uh, the last game found thing to talk about was your, your thing about marketing. You said you wanted to talk about marketing. Yeah, yeah. We, tried, we tried a couple different ads. So we ran, we were running our own ads. And then also we're running ads through GameFound uh, with their marketing team to see that stuff win. They they tried very and we tried very different kinds of ads with both as well, and they were using like their own like their own like audience like algorithms and everything, all that stuff. Isn't um, it funny how all the algorithms in the world still can't find people that want terrain? <laughs> like, we just have an incredibly niche audience. Very the small. reality is we have an incredibly niche audience. Yes. But here's the thing. We Every had, marketing person we talked to is like, oh, yeah, no, I got the thing. thing. I got the algorithm, the killer, killer we had, algorithm. We had really good return on our ads, though. Yeah. Like, when you, look, when, you look at the, when you look at the ROAS, it was a very good return. But it's still not um, bringing in thousands of people, right? It's, you know, we're, we're it's single digits and, the kind and of, tens. The, like, you know. I mean, the kind of product we have is you bring in one person, or that one person's high value. Like, that, yeah. that, that's what it is. It's just yeah. the nature of a product. Yep. Um, no, it's it's a good, we, we for the right people... You know, it's a little lightning rod when you get yeah. it. They're like, oh, that's it's, the, it's this the, is the thing. It's the reality, yep. you know, because we're not selling like $20 sunglasses or something. Like we're no. selling a product that people spend like a lot of money on. So, it, you know, it's harder for us to get a conversion. But those conversions. Really miniature $20 sunglasses. Yeah. That you can't actually but, Like wear. it's, you know, it's it's harder to get a conversion, but those yeah. conversions are higher value. Yeah. So it's. It's oh, when your average pledge is like a thousand dollars, those conversions are a whole different animal. The main, uh, the main thing, uh, is we we were trying to do some lifestyle ads. We were trying to do a lot of stuff with people's hands in them, uh, and part of that was we were and faces experimenting. Too, right? We had yeah, hands and hands and faces. People actually using the stuff. We were experimenting with um. What am I saying? We were experimenting with uh with lifestyle ads of like, hey, let's try some ads of people playing Shatterpoint uh, on our terrain. And all of our highest performing ads were the Shatterpoint ads. Go figure. Um, it's the best. Which, yeah, like, the, like both in terms of like total number of conversions, and then also just like total revenue coming in, like all the all the stuff that that featured that. Like, so what I'm hearing is that Star Wars is a popular property. Yeah, it turns it's out. It, yeah, I, I think for a lot of people, because the the thing we were thinking is. One of the questions that we get a lot is like, "What game is this for?" With like a with our our terrain, uh, and I, so I think a lot of people, I think there's a lot of people who play games that could use our terrain that don't understand that yes. we make something that is system agnostic, basically. Well, um, Gen Con when people saw a Star Wars Legion build, yeah, and oh, so you can do that. Yeah. So trying, yeah. So yeah. having a thing where it's like, oh, I'm seeing it be used for a game that I play. I think makes it. That's click. the game I play. Because they, because they know, like when they yep. see that, they're like, they know that like the the escarpments and everything aren't the shatter point terrain. So they get it. They're like, oh, that stuff yep. can be. I used recognize this with stuff. This game. I don't recognize that stuff. That's the one. Yeah. And I think it also makes it more clear too that like this is stuff that can be used for yep. anything. Yep. Um, but yeah. So I don't know. That that was that was nice. And so we're we're gearing up to do a lot more lifestyle stuff trying different games trying just more shoots that so show the stuff like in use like in context of people's tables and, and games just like the just they're, they're cats. being used the way that they'll actually use it if they get it and I with think. their cats apparently getting, getting cats in the photo would be great cats and escarpments apparently <laughs> yeah um cat cat sell turns out the internet likes the cats car sales versus phone sales is a thing yeah, yeah absolutely yeah hey, uh, let's see uh, very curious what uptake there is if you were to provide some tables at a Legion tournament or something. We're looking into sponsoring tables uh, yes. at conventions that we got going forward. Do you track attrition and retention of the customer base? Like people who invested for a long time and stopped buying and backing for whatever reason? Or is the core base of supporters pretty stable? Um, we're mostly pretty stable. Yeah, uh, there are people. people There are people who fall off after a while, uh, oh. which just happens. Um but in you general, lose your gaming group, you get divorced, you move to whatever. You like, in general, yeah. if somebody buys one set from us, they just have just like an extremely high rate of continuing to get stuff into the future. So that's yeah. really the main thing is like trying to make that first contact, trying to like 
I'm trying to get this stuff into people's hands because like once yes. you once you hold it you understand oh you need a bigger hand you couldn't it. just 3d print this like you couldn't just like do this yourself for like you know no money like we put effort into making into making it worth the money and i think yeah. people get that once they once they actually have it in their hands um agree giant golf post was spectacular usage of the null hole it, yeah giant golf is amazing yeah it's really uh uh it's so good so um so the last thing i had which is is now looking you should glint. shout 3d print this and then chuck a piece at them <laughs> dude the amount of times that people will see like this like huge like six by six and also loose? like two inch tall piece with like leds in it and they're like i could just print, 3D print, print that i'm like yeah you can you can yeah. you 3d print that like all right. And embed the LEDs and the magnets and paint it and have a yeah. working drawbridge and like yeah. yeah, and it would be like five yeah. bucks. What after all that was done, my time is worth nothing. Yeah. It's good. <laughs> I, it's, but, you know what? That's fantastic if you can. If you, you can, can like yeah. oh, incredible. Yeah, yeah. People make some marvelous, marvelous things. Uh, so it's just a different product. What there. else? What else are we going to reforge? Right. So we have. Um, so this is obviously something we'd like to repeat um dungeons is one that we've been dying we desperately need to go back to do some reconfigs do a couple new couple new pieces that are sculpted just need to be tooled and cast and ideally we'd actually do the tooling before we launch the thing so we can just do this fast because that's the other thing i'm excited it's like shipping this in six months is exciting like <laughs> wait six months is fast but you know for us that's fast it's a year faster than flow town or whatever mm -hmm. um so then what else what else is worth what else would people like to reforge um yeah. aside from dungeons right we know we got to do Cause, dungeons cuz like that's the that's the thing too with this right is it doesn't have to follow this format exactly yeah. and this is probably Tyler and I have said a couple times like this is probably the most sets we're ever going to have in this kind of thing um catacombs <laughs> that's making new that's new that's product a brand new that's new yeah. product that's entirely new product Resin to Dwarfenite. We, so what did we, if, go, what if, do, we do? Yeah, because we can't what just because we can't just use the existing catacomb sculpts. Like we'd have to resculpt all of it. Burrows is a is a perfect uh, is a perfect one. It's small, self contained, whatever. Burrows uh, and sewers. Re resin going going from resin to Dwarfenite. I mean, a whole new set of molds and a lot of that stuff. Is, we, 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 and we also can't. some of the stuff we can't. Some of the stuff that was sculpted for resin. It's wouldn't look good if you moved it over to Dwarvenite. You would need to re-sculpt it and make it different. Uh, yeah. yeah, like catacombs. there's... So, so, huh, if people want catacombs, huh? who would have guessed? Sewers. You know, the, I'll tell you what, this, the part... The, Burrows is definitely must. The, the problem with sewers is... And maybe we could actually do this. Uh, I really want to remaster. I We've got to, like, there's so much... We need to add... Sewers needs more pieces to really... Be full fledged. And it needs magnets. Um, yeah. It is Reforge like specifically reusing existing sculpts or are we talking to any small scale campaign? It just can't be like an entirely new, like 50 sculpt thing. I think that's the point where we're, it's not really a Reforged. That's like a sci fi it's, campaign. It's a couple of new pieces, but mostly existing pieces. Yeah. We can make a couple new things yeah. in most situations, but it's mostly like, about taking an existing collection and improving it whatever that means whether it's burrows rem is perfect yeah whether, like it, whether a couple it's remastering set, a starter set yeah. maybe a couple new pieces yeah remastering of whatever <laughs> moonlit archery forge that's the whole campaign <laughs> five or ten new sculpts could flush yeah. out sewers and burrows yeah yeah sewers reforged needs magnets from factory sadly. well that's the problem is like the the sewers we want to retool all those damn pieces if we're going to do it they all want anchor magnets and then it's a whole it's just it becomes a bigger project. Um, would we much need to make? Overhead. Would we need to make new masters for it, or would it be? Well, they'd have to make new new tools. They'd, like yeah, they have to make new molds. Masters. But could they just use the? They could use the existing masters for it. Yeah, but it's it's it's. That's Here's a the lot. question: it's, If you it's if you new if you redid sewers today, Ooh. would you want it to be in the city scale or dungeon scale? No dungeon. Yeah, that's that's what I'm thinking. You're going to build it with dungeon way more than you will yeah. with city. That's that's one of the other issues with sewers. 
the scale difference doesn't matter that much because you just you go through a door and then it's a different room and it's it's fine. It's 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 a very rare edge case that it comes up, but like But it does it yeah. does it does come up in some situations. Yeah. yeah. Transition pieces. Yes. Dude, transition everything. Ruins reforged. Like all the ruins plus more ruins. <laughs> I under Dragon scale. Burrows. Wait, transitions. Transitions is a really good one. Um Supers uh, have been using smaller magnets and sewers for years. We can continue to do so. Yeah. But it'd be nice if people didn't have but to. But we'd like to have them embedded. Yeah. Stepped away and you're on a scale gate. Well, we're, we're, talk, we're <laughs> talking about like what we would minute. do if we remastered certain yeah. things. Yeah. Because, yeah, I think there's I think there's reforged campaigns and then there's other like small campaigns that wouldn't be a reforged thing but would be more in the vein of like sci-fi. Yeah. Um, Everything's better with ruins, is right? Like, we got Ruins wants to be a whole. It wants to be a whole big campaign, like ruins. I think that'd be more. Of a, I think that'd be more sci-fi style than reforged. Yeah, no, it, pieces. We just a whole bunch of ruins, like just ruin the world. Like it's there's so much. Oh, ruins are so good. They can finally get their due. Um. Mm. It really I, reforged. I tell you the problem. You know, here's the problem, Chris. If sci-fi does really well. We're gonna have to do another sci-fi. So we've got High Town. So we're we already have plans out right till 2025. If if sci-fi just crushes it, that means we'll probably then have to do sci-fi after High Town, which means the next, you know, like we got to go to dungeons. I think we got to go back underground. Start dungeons. We got to go back underground for the next big fantasy terrain Kickstarter, right? So we can do catacombs we can add some cool new dungeon stuff some you know we've the technology we've we've come a long way with dungeons right some wild elevation like biscuit stuff or whatever like there's some neat stuff we could do in dungeons we have to do catacombs we could uh we could do sewers while we're down there like the whole thing that means all this other like ruins is like 2028 or something <laughs> that is a that's a long ways off you're just doing this specifically to uh well make rabbits sad. Do we do do we do ruins before modular ships? Or do we do modular ships first? Or is modular ships a small one like a a sci fi sci fi? I think it's I think modular ships is a small sci fi. Modular thing. ship, singular. We do a we do a Say, we do a the shipbuilding system would be it it's a small I think we do a small campaign that is all about the shipbuilding system. Be cool. Because you're gonna get a lot of people who will just want to make ships for like various random games, so the ability to like make custom ships for things, and then you know it's it keeps it like a bit more a bit easier to understand. This the modular ship system is gonna already gonna be very confusing. Well, it's so let it just be the only like, thing. Let it be the yeah. only thing you have to figure out. Um. Hmm. Yeah. No, either way, ruins is still like. It's still got a bunch of stuff to uh, a bunch of stuff to get through before we get to mega. Unless we do a series of small ruined campaigns, like which I think is doable. You know, yeah, it would be interesting. Ruin city, a small ruin city campaign. Ruin castle, small campaign. Just like you know, twenty pieces, twenty four pieces. Maybe do that. Do I don't the know. do the do like the Ashlar ruins with the sand campaign or something and it's like oh these are like desert ruins you know problem is we try and we try and we have intentions to tack in ruins into a bunch of things as we go and they always end up getting cut well you don't need like, full buildings for the desert so you just you, yeah. put, you put the ruins in there what i'm saying it was yeah. castles there were supposed to be ruins and they got cut dungeons there's still some ruins in castles there were like three pieces of the yeah. pitians, but yeah, yeah, there was a whole. There's ones that were sculpted that we never did. Dungeons. There were supposed to be ruins. They got cut. We brought them back the next year in caverns, but they were they got bumped for a year. Uh, Low town originally said it was gonna have ruins. Those got bumped. Then we're like, okay, we'll do it in high town. They got bumped. Uh, they're perpetually bumped. Hmm. Honestly, you know what? You know what could actually make a very good small campaign just taking the whole versions of the wildlands ruins and that could be its own campaign well there are a bunch of that stuff's already sculpted that's what i'm saying we already yeah. have a lot of it 
We can just we can take look at that collection, round it out a that bit. That could more, be a maybe. very easy small. Yeah. Yeah. Well. And that also, hey, those things function for sci-fi or fantasy, baby. Like, hmm? you can drop those in any 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 setting. I have to find the mocks. I was doing stairs and roofs, and there were some interesting. Huh. Hmm. Hmm. God, there's so much to do. We got like. We gotta pick up the pace. That's the thing. Things, it's, you know. Yeah, we need we yeah. need we need more projects right now. Yeah, yeah. Here's the thing. Sand ruins. We're at least very likely. It's looking like we're never gonna be two years between projects again. The, the way no. things, the way things, too are, many projects the way things are going. going now. Yeah. Like we're looking at launching two next year. Yeah. And we're then we've got one already slotted for 2025, and you bet we're gonna add another one in there. Well, because we also we already have sixty of those low town pieces sculpted or something. So yeah. like, or the high town, whatever the whatever town it is. Yeah. The yeah. So we like. Sci-fi should be done sculpting uh, end of October. Where here's there should be done sculpting end of the year. Then we're into high town, just plunging ahead until that's ready to go. So I bet we're I bet we're sculpting on whatever's after high town. This time next year. Dedicated rooms, mini campaigns that are re- well, yeah, yeah. Once sci-fi sculpting is done, oh, and dungeon stuff is already. We have five, six dungeon pieces waiting to be tooled. Yeah, I was. I wasn't even counting. Holy moly! I wasn't even counting the stuff that we're doing with like reconfigurations yeah. and Wild Ends Reforged and other straight to web store <laughs> stuff we have planned. Like, I wasn't even counting that. But in terms of like just straight up new product, we've already got two planned for next year. Under um, new burrows. Yeah, we're we're and then. Yeah, plus tons of plus whatever. But, uh, Dedicated runes better. mini campaigns that are a reforged type campaign. You get the runes for one biome and can pre-order other stuff from that biome to go with it. Deforged, we'll call them. Deforged. Deforged. They've been. <laughs> I ruined. love it. It's good. There's not a ton of runes that we need to make. Honestly, we just gotta do it. Like we just have to do them. But it, like you need you need enough pieces to make it look organic and like it's yeah you know. I think it I wants think, it wants two dozen pieces for. I think each. we should start exploring and just kind of get a sense of like what would it take for us to do this Kalen's here like you know the, the those pieces like what would it take for us to do this just get like a gauge of that so we can see like where would we be able to slot this in in the future if we wanted to because um, yeah we've already got sculpting done on it it'd be a shame for that to just be completely wasted. Hmm. And those runes are very popular. I guarantee when those come when they come in and. October, whenever they're coming in now, like they're gonna sell very well. Like, God, when do we slot that in? I don't know. Well, let's go with the end. We gotta maybe, get maybe 2025. Who knows? Yeah, like, yeah, or do we shove them into high town. I don't know. They want to be their own little, I feel like they want to be their own thing. Um, hmm. Hmm. Uh, let's see. Well, all right, what else? Uh, I think that's everything I had on the uh, that's everything I had on the list. What about an upgrades yeah. campaign adding five to six pieces to various previous sets? It'd be a full campaign with various mini sets. I think the thing is we still want each campaign to feel like if you came into it without anything from that from that like from that collection, there's like a, a something for you to do there, you know? Like I think mm. we wanna we wouldn't want it to just be upgrade pieces. We would still want to print starter sets or something well, in that fashion. Generally, we yeah. want each thing to be self-contained so that you could, yeah, yeah, you could show up and be like, oh, I don't have anything. This is, I can get something to get me going, you know, to some start. Of, start some of the rune sets you have now don't make sense to me. There are two almost identical tutor rune sets. It's because we need to retire one of them. Yeah. We're, we're going to retire the tutor ruins add-on pack, I think. Sharp eyes. Yeah. There's there's a lot of, that. that's part of the cleaning up the website stuff that we're doing yeah. throughout this year is we need to retire a lot of things uh, in the web store that have been replaced and stuff like that. Um, Eric yeah. is losing his hair over the, the amount of sets that need to be cleaned off that store. Yeah. We're getting there. We're getting there. It, it, it's, it's going. In fact, there's going to be, a, what was the one? Oh, the, the wilderness stuff. We're going to do, a, do a, a purging a bunch of those sets. Right? Mm. At some point in the... Yeah. Yeah, so um, this this before the end of the year stuff like the original like stuff like the original like basic escarpments composition stuff like that. It's like, yeah. well, we need to get rid of this because, uh, you know, we've got a new composition for it coming in and we don't want to have two things with the same name and it's clutter. So, yeah, a lot of that stuff. 
Have you considered buying your own factory and doubling the pace? <laughs> well, good money. Honestly, like it's you? not it's not the factory that's it's we're a very small team. Yes. Um we just are. Yeah. At the same time, we don't want to just ruthlessly scale up uh because we've seen that go bad for a lot of people. And also, uh we like the vibe we have here. <laughs> it's better to be a small, passionate, dedicated team than a big corporate conglomerate or whatever. Like we just like that said, we can grow, and we have been growing, yeah. but like we're growing slowly over time. Very slow pace, one or two people a when, year. When it gets to like, a point where it's like, we really just kind of need somebody here. Like, yeah. Then we bring somebody in. But um, it's, it's really important to keep the... Like this web developer. This small team vibe yeah, we, in the... Yeah. yeah. Well, that was... <laughs> I mean, Johanna was doing like six people's job, and then yeah. we have little by little been like filling in the holes that she left. But, but no, but it's it's important, like the alchemy, like the the you know the personal alchemy, right? Like getting people that fit in the mix and are you know want to be here and resonate right, and like it's a you know it's important to not just just throw a whole bunch of people in rapid fire and willy nilly and you know. yeah. Hey, Elise, how are you doing? Hey, how are you doing? Speaking of smart and scrappy and making it work, uh, congratulations on delivering session zero. Yeah, must be exciting to see that. Uh, let's just be exciting to see that. Did it ship out already? Delivering. I think they're about to ship it. The digital, the digital yeah. went out. I think they're like in the final stages. It's um, amazing. Yeah. Early. Are they shipping early? I everything's a blur. Yeah. I just remember I got the digital stuff. Uh, you can only buy so much dwarvenite in a year, anyways. Yeah, that's that's, a, that's another thing too. Is like we we can't just like infinitely produce. It can't be like Magic the Gathering where you like start putting out six six product lines in a year or whatever they do. Like yeah. More, I guess now. They're like, I don't know. It came, I, yeah. The, it's it's a fire hose. It's it's yeah. like 20 times what they used to be producing. It's it's, it's madness. Bonkers. It's honestly... Lord of the Rings it stuff is, looks really nice. Though. It has burned me out from from magic like i just i like it's such a fire and stuff i'm just like i'm out i can't like i i i used to be really actively like trying to you know what the sets were and be on it it was like four things a year i could do that now it's they like have a release every 20. two weeks now or something like every yeah. it's 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 a lot i i tell you though the art on the lord of the Rings stuff is beautiful though gabe gave me like a little uh, he gave me like the starter thing for it and i was just looking through the art it's unreal the magic art's always been good but the, i feel like the lord of the Rings stuff's like on another level the magic it's... card has not always been good. <laughs> okay, but it's often been very good. The, in the last decades, sure. it's been fantastic. It's the, the best, you know, they're, they do all the best fancy art in the world. Like, yeah. it, there's, go look at some of those old, like, <laughs> there's, there's, what's it, the Watcher in the Dark? There's a card that's just, it's just black, like, mar like Sharpie with two eyes, like, sticking out of it. So there are some, like, there's some unbelievably bad cards, real, like, like, uh, embarrassingly bad, uh, card art whatever but uh but yes right now it is it is stellar and just so like it's really 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 exciting oh right uh yeah mirscape added some of our forest stuff Woo! right 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 forgot about that yeah the uh, mirscape uh uh forest stuff Hildebrand zombie decks better be a thing or i'll riot right they're doing literally they're doing the final fantasy collab jesus they're doing With they're collabing 40k Doctor Who, they're collabing with everything. Lord of the Rings, Stranger Things, like thing, it's Transformers. All you can, these have, things you can have somebody, were... you can have somebody playing like a Stranger Things, like red, white deck against somebody playing a, like a, uh, Lord of the Rings, like green black versus Final Fantasy versus somebody doing Doctor Who. There's literally forty k in Magic. I don't know. Anyway. anyway it, Brilliant, brilliant game, brilliant mechanics. Just pump the brakes on how much stuff you're putting out, guys. Although Wonder, I'm very excited for Wilds of the Dream. One of Wildlands but blew the bank on Colt. Yeah, we expe we expected that, that was probably a, a part of like what went on too. Is because it was also like Colt did a lot, and people put a lot of money into Colt. Uh, and so there was part of that like yeah. going to Reforge. We're like, are people even well, going to be right? That's someone's point. There's only so much you can buy in a year. Like yeah. we don't want any rapid fire projects out. Yeah, I tap eleven to use hold up her hand. Eleven uses nosebleed. Uh, last time I played Magic the Gathering, I was buying Ice Age boosters. Hold up her hand. That's... Are you guys talking about Magic the Gathering or Smash Up Card Game? Uh, Magic the Gathering. Yeah. 
Ice Age was uh, that's when I stopped playing Magic with the little with the little saber tooth tiger and the and Scrat was it Scrat? So let's he call it a night. Nut. We're gonna <laughs> he finds his nut and there's the we found our nut and it's time to is that kid that, that yeah. kid probably looks terrifying. It, it was by it was a, animation standard. It was a big deal because they reprinted the icy manipulator and it was like the icy Ice manipulator. Age. Yeah. It's, you could tap it to tap another card. It was like a big. It's a really cool card. It was called it was the. It's called the IC manipulator. Yes, it was an artifact. I think it's awesome. And you think? But they reprinted it. And it got people angry because like you they devalued my Alpha IC, and it was a whole thing. Oh, and Spelljammer sounds so dumb. Dude, IC manipulator is dynamite. You can't. <laughs> hey, I know somebody who writes magic cards. So do you. <laughs> Question: Where is session zero at? Uh, it was on Kickstarter. All right. They did it on Kickstarter. Yeah. Ice Age was a huge expansion that was the start of the end. It sounds fitting for an Ice Age. Right. Uh, uh, fine line between stupid and clever. That's, our, that's the DF model. Yeah. All right. Um, let's, uh, let's call it a night because it's, it's, uh, uh, it's 9 o'clock. You've got to go to bed. You've got to be on a plane. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. 24 hours from now, you're going to be flying through yes. the air at like 50,000 miles an hour, yes. however fast a plane goes. Being launched out it's of the about 50,000 miles an hour, I think. Probably. I'm pretty sure. I'm actually very curious about this. Very close. How it's fast like 350 miles an hour. You'd probably die. <laughs> I used Google Chrome at around 460 400. to 575 miles an hour. Oh, so I was off by a lot. It's not as, it's honestly slower than I expected. 500 miles an hour is pretty fast. How fast do you think like a fighter jet goes? Because they have jets that can break like the speed miles. of sound. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Oh, but that's a topic for next week's stream, where we're going to cover the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow. Uh, that's thanks. Way less than five hundred. Little. What depends on is an African or European swallow. Good night, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, we love you all. Thanks for all the goodbyes. Thanks for all the support. Congrats to our winners. Uh, hobby hang tomorrow night. I don't think so because you got the Warhammer stuff going on. I think you're going to keep him here past hobby hang time. You're right. We're doing uh, we're doing uh, August tomorrow, so there'll be uh, three tables of Warhammer going. So we're ruining hobby hang for that. But uh, next week we'll be back. We don't know what we're covering, and then hobby hang will be back, and then the week after that sci-fi first look. Um, first look at sci-fi. Yeah. First and last look. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. yeah. We just everybody 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 hates it. And we just decide not <laughs> to. Like that's it. it. We're out of here. We're... Let's go make magic cards. All right. I think people are going to be very happy with it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's awesome. That's why it's so good. Thank All you, right. everybody. Good night, everybody.